Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate, the Nate Land Podcast. Uh, firstly, if uh, thoughts and emotions are piling up, a fresh, fresh perspective can help you feel better. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com. Use promo code Nate during sign up to get $100 off your first month. That is $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code Nate. What would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? Would you move to a new city, start a new family? Through Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly with a personal loan so you can tackle your next big financial goal. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. With Indeed's Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to Indeed.com slash Nate to claim your $75 credit before April 30th. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Life insurance gives you peace of mind, and you can trust Policy Genius. They don't add on extra fees or sell your info to third parties. Head over to policygenius.com slash Nate to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save at policygenius.com slash Nate. And finally, Nate Land is brought to you by Masterclass. Learn from the pros and get unlimited access to every class. Right now, get 15% off annual membership at masterclass.com slash Nate. That's masterclass.com slash Nate for 15% off. All right, let's go, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Like we said, we're sitting here with Iron, uh, I almost said Iron Weber. <laughs> Aaron Weber. Brian Bates, <laughs> and we have the intern Cole. It's good to be back. Yeah, Thank people you. demanded for you to be back. A lot of people asked for you never to come back. Is that how's that feel? It's no one ever. Upsetting. No one said that at all. But I got, <laughs> that was just uh, Bates said that. And yeah, how, how crazy is that? How could he turn? You know, you're doing all the work. I know. I know, I mean, dude. All right. I, I, know. Uh, I want you to stay. I already got my college choice for you. Yeah, yeah. It's here in town. <laughs> so, Cole, uh, we've, we, you, you, you've made a choice on where you're going to go to college. Yep. Uh, and no one knows this choice. Your parents know, I guess, right? You told I, them. To, I told them. You yeah. at least told them. You make them find out here. <laughs> uh, we do not know. We got, no. uh, as you can see, the hats are on the table. If you're listening, we have a lot of hats on the table. Uh, a few of these. Uh, we can see, like, uh, you know, what, what is this one? What's that first hat right there? This one. That's Bucky's. Bucky's. So this is college didn't plan out. <laughs> this is a great, great place. We've been to this place. Uh, and are you going to, we can ask now, are you going to go full time at Bucky's? You don't even and work there part time. It's a possibility. Yeah. Maybe growing still company. do it. Mm -hmm. It's a growing company. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but this is not the college choice. No. But if it doesn't, if college doesn't work out, and if you it's don't end up going, up, yeah. this is probably where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So I'd say Bucky's, save the hat. I'd say save it <laughs> just so your first day you at least can, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're like, at least you're, it's one less bother. If you go into the interview at Bucky's, you wear this hat and they're like, oh, thanks for, and you go, yeah, absolutely. It was one of my college choices. <laughs> uh, so go through this hat. You know what this one is? I don't. No. So this is my high school. <laughs> so Donaldson Christian Academy. Uh, we have a golf tournament, uh, I think, next week. And if you want to go back to high school, I, this is as far as I made it. <laughs> this is my peak. This is my college. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and so if you don't want to go to college, this is, their, this is the symbol for that. If you want to stand against colleges. Do you want to make that stand? <laughs> um, you know, you got to decide right now. Right sure? now, it's I either you I'll don't go to <laughs> Cool. You didn't even hear me out. <laughs> you don't. You go back to DCA. You go to my high school, and you, you look. You're older. They probably let you start teaching there. I can probably get you teaching. <laughs> maybe a decent parking spot. Yeah, that's a big deal. Get paid to go to school. I mean, maybe. Probably get paid. All right. I thought it was a good option. So. We also have, oh, we have this one too, Chick-fil-A. Another solid job. <laughs> yep. It's like Bucky's. This is a great place to work. Yeah. And 
<laughs> this is all your kind of not college choices. Are you Chick Fil A? Would you work there? I could see myself there. You could yeah. see mm-hmm. yourself there For in about sure. ten years. Do you currently have a job? I do. What do you do now? I am my lifeguard at oh. the rec center. Oh wow! Yeah, that's fun. You know, so if that you like that, that's a fun job, right? Just sit there. I mean, <laughs> it's boring, but yeah, you know, Maybe decent pay. That's and... what people want to hear when they relying on you watching their children. <laughs> I don't know. I zone out quite a bit. <laughs> they're, good, uh, they're good swimmers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you saved anybody? I haven't. No. Okay. So Chick Fil A, it's there. Worst case, mm-hmm. wear it when you go order food. There. You put in some time at Chick Fil A; they'll pay for your college. In like, college, right. maybe you get a you need a job. Chick Fil A is a good job to have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It depends on where you're going to choose. So this looks like we're now to some uh, some real choices here. So uh, we have Vanderbilt. Obviously, I'm a giant fan. Mm-hmm. Did you try to go to Vandy? I did not apply. Oh. Sorry, say. That was my choice. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted you to stay in town. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> this would have been a great choice. You'd have been near your parents. They would have liked that. Yeah. And then uh, you could have just kept doing this podcast for us <laughs> instead of leaving us, <laughs> which would have been good. You know, Vanderbilt, being an intern at this podcast, I think helps you get into Vanderbilt. Sure mm-hmm. did. But, all right, I guess I'm not going to throw it on the ground. <laughs> no. It deserves it. So now we're down. So we got four choices here, or three, and then hand me that one. Obviously, Notre Dame, Aaron. There you go. Dumb one. <laughs> so, not going to Notre Dame. That doesn't make sense. You just, you know, like, why would you even, who thinks about it? I'm sorry. Yeah. So, class. yeah. Should have put a Burger King hat up there yeah, instead. He doesn't come from Notre Dame royalty where he can, just anybody can get in. You got, your family's been going there for years and years and okay. years. Okay, okay. Uh, Notre Dame's a solid school. So, oh, so here's the choices. We got Clemson. Auburn, Alabama, and Texas, right? Mm. So, if anybody wants to, you want to take a take a shot in the dark. We we'll get four choices. What you're choosing? I'm gonna go with Clemson. Clemson. Clemson came out of nowhere. I've not heard any rumors about Clemson, but you know, you know, the cul de sac talks, <laughs> and so I have not heard anything about Clemson. I feel like you're more of an East Coast guy. You're going to want to stay closer. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. Closer to the East Coast. Yeah. He gives off yeah. e- East Coast vibes to yeah. you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know bit. if I'm getting that. Yeah, his family's from New I Jersey. From there, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. It, it yeah, does yeah. change a lot. Well, it was the episode you missed here for a long time. That you weren't yeah. here. We talked okay. Yeah. okay. I'm going Texas. That's Texas. My, that's my pick. Yeah. Joining the SEC. Solid. Mm-hmm. Joining the SEC. So y'all, you will be your parents will see you when they come play Vandy. Yep. Yeah. And that's good. Uh all right, so my choice. So I know you went down to Alabama. I know we all went to Auburn. Uh, I think you liked Auburn. Clemson surprises me. I didn't know anything about it. Maybe I did know. Uh, Clemson's not bad in Texas. You did go to Texas. Uh, I don't, you know what? I will to to mix it up. See if we even get. It. I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Auburn just because I remember we went there. It's down here. Uh, it, you know, you like you like the drive down there. It's a fun school. Uh, you know, so uh, Cole, uh, go ahead and pick away. Take one away. What's take one that's away that you're not going? to? I'll take Texas away. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Mm. Boom. It's a little too far Aaron's for me. Down. A little okay. too far. Okay. See, uh, great program though. Great program. Great program. Great program. Yes. What? Uh, so we you want to take uh one more away? Take. Bama away. Uh, oh, oh, took yeah. Alabama. Laura's upset about that. Sorry. Laura fainted. Oh, Laura, Laura fainted on the out. ground. <laughs> Alabama's out. You're. It's where you're from. I know. It's where I'm from and what I picked. So yeah. I, I'm going to sit you this not, one out. So when you see Aaron talk, you're like, I don't want to be taught by those people. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> that's what the Alabama. Big but I guess you it. will with Auburn, too. So <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be. But all right. So this will be the choice. Mm-hmm. Auburn, me and, Clemson. Me and which me. one? Are you going to? All right. So I've decided to take my talents to Auburn University. Oh! Oh! Look at that. Clemson's out. Congratulations. Look, congratulations. congratulations. I was Thank right. You guys. I, we went to Auburn. We went to game down there. You loved it down there, didn't you? Mm-hmm. It's a good, it's not a crazy drive. It's far enough from your parents, but close enough to, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. I think that's what you want. You mm-hmm. want to get, I want to get far enough away 
but you still need to do laundry. Yeah. So, <laughs> was there any other reason you chose it? Um, I don't know. Just great traditions. Really, everyone there seemed to love it. Yeah. You know, it just felt mm-hmm. like a good place to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what you're going to major in? Accounting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> uh, that's what everyone <laughs> says that I've told. They're like, they're like, oh, that's so boring. I'm like, it is. No, it, but if it, you, it, but he, I think it's my, my buddy P, Jeremy Morrow. He's uh he does accounting. He loves it. People that like they they if you like numbers and you like that kind of thing, it's I think people really like it. Yeah. And it's like that's your world. I don't think people know what accounting is. I don't, you know, I don't yeah. know. Do you know but, a lot of tax stuff? I don't. Oh, not well, really. My own kid on it. We're, we're talking about today. <laughs> well, that's why you're going to college, you know. Yeah. That's so right. I to learn, that's right? right. That's why I don't know it. I have a joke mm-hmm. about and I not knowing taxes and it's I didn't go to college and I would have learned all these tax stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Dude, congratulations. Congratulations, man. It's a great choice. You're going to have fun down there. We're going to come to a game. We're going to watch everybody. Cole will be at Auburn. Mm. So make sure you go down there and say hello to Cole at Auburn. When do you start? Uh, Like early August, I think. Did you already like submit? You have to. What do you have to do? You have to call them and say, I'm um, going to go. <laughs> I got do this hat thing in front of them. <laughs> Is this how they will find out? Yeah, they're going to watch it. Okay. I'll That's send them good. the link. Yeah, send them the link. Let them know. <laughs> yeah. no, I got my... My housing all set up, but I haven't sent my like enrollment deposit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the last thing I need to do. It's probably a fun campus. And when we went down there, I, it was a very fun campus, and it was a very cool campus when we went to that game. And like, so I, I could definitely see how it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to have fun. Awesome, buddy. And you're going to go work now. You yeah, gotta go to work. Gotta go to Lifeguard. Work. Mm-hmm. Outside or inside? Inside, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say it's raining. Out <laughs> yeah, right it's now. raining outside. So, all right, and it's so you got to do some lifeguarding. Mm-hmm. You can wear the hat. Um, I could. Do they know? Do you, does, does your school know? <laughs> does your high school know? I've told my friends, yeah. Oh, just close friends. Mm-hmm. But now you're telling the world. The, the world. world. The, the world. whole world. The whole world's listening to this, Cole. Uh, can I still email you? Yeah. I don't know. Sure. Let's, we're <laughs> see. Cole, see how, Cole at auburn.edu? Yeah, let's see what is. Let's see what is how his first semester goes. Yeah. I don't know how much, you know. But it, I don't think you want people to be like, why is your dad's friend emailing, you know? <laughs> Why's your dad's older brother emailing me? Uh, uh, all right. You can go to work. Thank you for doing this, Cole. We loved it. Thanks for all your help. You've been helping us a lot. We still expect you to help us. Of course, man. We still need you. Uh, so go get a college education. Come back. Help us more. All right. So, all right. Good. Congrats. Thank Cole, guys. everybody. There Auburn is. University. There he is. There we go. Amazing. About to be the best four years of your life, dude. This is it. Have fun. The most fun, not the, not the, maybe not the happiest, but the most fun. Yeah. Do you think there's a difference? That's what I think that's part of getting older is I'm learning there's a difference. See you, buddy. See you. Uh, yeah, I'd say definitely. Yeah. I don't think he stands a chance. <laughs> as soon as he leaves, you're like, that kid's going Dead nowhere. Dead man walking. <laughs> See ya, sucker. Okay. I was being real serious about that Bucky's hat. I go, hey. <laughs> Cole's like unbelievably smart. Uh, that's awesome. That's, you know, it's fun. You know, I felt like I didn't get to make a choice, so there you go. I felt. That is a lot of fun. It is a lot of Do fun. Do a hat selection ceremony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah. <laughs> Seven hats. All the choices in the world. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, all right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to start off, uh, as we always do, with uh, your guys' comments. Thank you for writing in. We always appreciate it. Uh, first up, Rusty Green. This is, I know Rusty. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, this episode was my all-time favorite. Having three of you together again was such a joy to, to watch. Getting a behind look at the Grammys was fascinating with Laura as a guest. Taking time at the end to talk about Brian and the birth of Eleanor was the cherry on the top. Coming from a longtime fan, the whole episode was a full of last special moments. Five stars. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, That's Rusty. very nice. That's very nice. Thanks, Rusty. Good to see you, buddy. Or to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> kind of through this. <laughs> yeah. Rusty, I think you came to shows like real early. Like when I was like maybe in Chicago. Like, I mean, like super, super early. You know him from here? Uh, no, from there. If he's I, From I, Chicago? I, yeah, yeah. Like, and from Friends. And so they're that way. Yeah. Uh, uh, Laura Tanner, Lara, Laura Tanner. I'd like to congratulate Brian early on Parenthood because of the patience, kindness, love, and support he shows while Nate is reading <laughs> makes it clear he will be a wonderful father. 
keep up <laughs> the great job, gentlemen. And thank you for being one of the reasons I'm able to not only stay sane during this crazy time, but to laugh to you guys through it. That's very nice. Insult to me, but <laughs> I hope we all feel warm and fuzzy about that. <laughs> Bonnie Paragoy. Probably right, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paragoy. Mm-hmm. I was a little frustrated with how long it took the guys to acknowledge how fantastic Laura looked in the pictures. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I said she looked, I mean, I said it a ton that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if she wants me just going crazy over your wife. I was going to say, yeah. I feel like that's up to you, Nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Laura, it, you're so yeah. hot. She <laughs> photos yeah, yeah. turning yeah. me on. She, yeah, she looked <laughs> terrific. I was glad everybody got to see the pictures. It was, uh, yeah, she looked awesome yep. and was very, very beautiful and hot and, you know, but yeah. Uh, I'm glad y'all didn't, you know, harp on it. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. Like, all right, guys, let's get it together. Uh, Kid Nurse 1970. Hello, folks. Not nine minutes in, and Nate has blessed us with the expenditure. Please do an episode on the Pepsi Jet. Finally, you were robbed at the Grammys. You're easily one of the best in the game and deserve that win. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah. I'd say the Kid Nurse 1970. I agree Nate is one of the best in the game. But to win a Grammy, you have to be the best in the game, and the Grammys determine he is not. So. Oh, well, oh good God. night. <laughs> yeah. So much for that kindness yeah. you're showing, Nate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for all the, as I'm gonna, I'd like that clip pulled aside. For all the Nate, you're too mean to Brian, and you know, uh, just roll it. What's the expenditure? <laughs> Um, that was you trying to announce or pronounce expenditure. Oh, expenditure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Expenditure. Expenditure. Yeah. I looked up the Pepsi jet. I know all about it now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you, I'm going to watch this commercial about it or are you going to talk about it first? Well, you can. You don't even have to play the audio for it. But basically, it was uh, he took the guys, he took Pepsi to court. Yeah. Because they wouldn't give him the jet. And then they said, it's unrealistic. The, they, the judge ruled in Pepsi's favor. It's unrealistic for you to think that they would really give you a jet because the commercial is a kid who shows up at school in this fighter jet. He says, it's better than riding the bus. <laughs> so the judge said, this is a case of puffery, which we talked about uh, yeah, in our advertising, yeah. where no one's really going to think that this is real. Yeah. And then he argued, a judge shouldn't be deciding this, but a jury of the Pepsi generation. So he kept going back and forth, but... The judge finally ruled in favor of Pepsi. And then Pepsi changed their ad from 7 million points to 70 million points. Yeah. But then put, just kidding, like just to be yeah. safe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This guy now lives, he's a, he works for the Park Service in Washington, D.C. Did he get any money? No. Why don't they at least give him the money back for what he spent? Well, they didn't cash his check. Yeah. He sent in $700,000 to say, yeah. give me this jet that yeah. he raised through investors. Yeah. Oh. And they didn't cash it. They didn't. Yeah. They, oh, okay. They're, yeah. They're, they're, okay. They, let it, they gave him that money back. What does least. it say? Let me see the. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Right there's a good spot. Yeah. So there he is with his, the kid yeah. with his. Yeah. T shirt, cool 75 Pepsi t shirt points. on. Leather jacket, 1450 Pepsi points. Shades. Shades 175. <laughs> Yeah, here he is, paper blowing in the classroom. Yeah. He shows up with a <laughs> with a fighter jet. You can see this it. on YouTube. If you yeah, <laughs> and then it says beats Harrier the bus. flight seven million Pepsi points. I don't know, man. I I kind of like. It's almost like I like the idea of they should have to they should have to give this guy this. I agree because it's like you want to go like, well, you got caught. Yeah, mm -hmm. a guy called you out. And so you got caught. I, I must, you don't have to give him, don't give him a fighter jet. I, even if you're like, we're not going to give you 33 million. We got caught. But like, here's a million dollars. Like, you know, or something. Just be like, you, you got caught. Yeah. You, did, you didn't mm -hmm. like, you know, give it up for the dude that got it. Like, that's insane. Yeah. And then he went and raised the money. I mean, he, how does no one think that, you know? Give him some, I mean, they give him free Pepsi. They probably didn't give, me, give him a shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm and on the had, side of him. A ton of legal fees too, because he just. Kept they should have going. paid for all. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't agree with how. I don't think right now he would get. I think they they mm -hmm. would have to give him something. Are you going to become a Coke guy now? Is this enough to get you off <clears> Team Pepsi? No, 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 no. Pepsi still. I like Pepsi. Uh, Coke would never have done this. Uh, Coke would have done it. <laughs> this is what Coke. This is where they made their money off of this. 
<laughs> Promising fighter jets to kids, <laughs> you know. There, uh, but I think I don't. I think nowadays I don't think he would. I think he'd get money because there's with social media. There's so much pressure on the companies. Back then, they'd have. I mean, what was that? Pay. That was 2007. Mm-hmm. No, uh, it was oh. earlier than that. Oh That's, yeah, it was like 96 or something. So back then, you have no shit. No one cares about you, and no one even knows you're trying to do this. Yeah. Right? And so, but now with social media, <clears throat> I mean, you couldn't. You would just get ridiculed. Mm-hmm. I mean, people would just start doing it, and they'd have to give them a fighter jet. And if I was Pepsi, I would straight up give them a fighter jet. Yeah, why not? I would be like, I'm not going to give you the money, but I will give you a fighter jet, and then you have to deal with that. Yes, yeah, so that's a way bigger hassle than you're yeah. thinking. I mean, where, where do you where do you put it? I would drive it to his house and drop it off in his street, <laughs> and then I would leave, and then go, "Yeah, man, congratulations. We didn't promise any other stuff." And I would I'd make it a, like Pepsi should be like, "All right, all right, you're right, you're right." <laughs> if you listen to all these episodes, I'll give you a fighter jet. Uh, <laughs> I wanted dates. Like- will get it. <laughs> If you get I mean, folk points, I'll give you all fighter jets. I found the guy. I wanted to, like, I found his phone number. I yeah. wanted to call him and say, can you come in and walk out of the bathroom and yeah. surprise Nate? But yeah, uh, he's a park ranger in Washington, D.C. now. Oh, I love it. Maybe we can, get him, maybe we can talk to him one day. Maybe. We should try to find him. You got mm-hmm. his phone number. Good night. <laughs> This guy's trying to live. I mean, he can't, you know. You can't. The problem is, I think, your, with your age mixed with technology – is no good because you know a white book mm-hmm. really well, mm-hmm. and so you take that in technology. Now, kids try to like Google name; they, they they're going to get stuck pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. But the older folk that know how to do both, like Bates, that's like my whole life was finding people's phone numbers. Yeah, well, now I'm on. Uh, I do a cameo, and I go too yeah. far on like people. Like I'll do some research on them. Yeah, <laughs> do you <laughs> like, really? Like, <laughs> hey, Aunt Jenny said that. Uh, you know, Vicky had her baby last week. Like yeah. I tell them stuff they don't know. Yeah, yeah. I do some real research on them. Oh. Not just the stuff they give me. If anything, mine are too. Is long. It you're on Cameo. Yeah. What? How many have you done? Ten. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome. Man. That's yeah. awesome. Look at that. It's fun. So if you want a Bates, if you want a Cameo from Bates, <laughs> if you want a little too much info, <laughs> yeah, if anything is too much, yeah, I'll get personal. Uh, that's great. Uh, Mike Terry, Nate talking about. Presenting at the Grammys, it can be super quick or it can be super fast. It will probably be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I don't even. I'd say that about everything. <laughs> you always. Well, I, I don't know. I might stand. <clears throat> so like being like when you're up there, it's like the ten or sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. I think that's everything. Like you. Like when, uh, you know what? For jokes, I, I will stand beside. I'll stand by it. It depends on how they're going to react. If they react bad, it's going to be super quick. If it destroys, uh, oh, well, I said super quick or super fast. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the point is you oh, said yeah. the same thing twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. You're right, Mike. Hey, come it, Mike. I don't know what I'm saying, dude. He wins. Paul Collier. I went to school with a girl named Isis. She joined the military, and this photo was taken her at her going away party before she got deployed to Afghanistan. Thought you might enjoy it. <laughs> Good luck, ISIS. We are proud of you. Over an American <laughs> yeah. flag. Over an American flag. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fun. So, well, good luck, ISIS. <laughs> uh, I'm rooting for you, ISIS. <laughs> maybe she the aged her to get in everywhere, you know? She just go up and they're like, who are you? She goes, I'm ISIS. They go, All right. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come yeah. on in. You're in. Uh, Shadow, Cam- Shadow Champ. Hello, folks. Just spent two days in Lebanon, and wow, I can see what made Bandana the way he is. I'd like to know where you grew up, Shadow Champ. Well, he's vacationing in Lebanon, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Worse than Maryland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had the headed last, on down. We had the last Kmart in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Is yeah. it still? You still have it? No, it closed recently. There's only three left yeah. in the U.S. That's crazy. That's what's on the when you drive past Lebanon on the interstate. What's on the attraction sign on the side of the interstate? You know those big blue signs, like, uh, attractions, pilots, <laughs> gas station, <laughs> flying J. They had to scratch yeah. that Kmart off of it. Yeah, <laughs> they go. This is gonna hurt business. Uh, do you have an outlet? We do have an outlet. You have an outlet. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. That outlet's struggling. Oh it's yeah, a lot of empty stores. Cedars of Lebanon State Park. I worked oh, there okay. one summer. Oh yeah. Wow. What'd you do at the park? Worked at a camp store. 
Okay. Yeah. You look like you'd work at a park. (laughs) You do really look like if I saw you at a park, I would, I bet if you walked around a park, people would ask you, they just, if you wore that, yeah, people would come up and ask you about park (laughs) stuff. What's wrong with this? No, I'm just saying, just regular even outfit. you're that yeah. obvious yeah. that you don't, your face would still be like, I bet he works here. <laughs> like when you got with the Kmart face? Like the Kmart. Yeah. You have yeah. a you have a, a park you, you have a park, park face. Sears of Lebanon State Park. Yeah. Yeah. I could you know, I could see it. You see it? Yeah, people get it. <laughs> <clears throat> Carlos Scholl. Jared Leto's method acting actually caused the production of his new Morbius movie to be delayed. It was getting so bad that they had to push him in a wheelchair to shorten his bathroom breaks bef- because his character has a disability. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Isn't that movie supposed to be real bad, too? I don't know. Is uh, it out? I think it's yeah, out. Yeah, it's out. It's number one in the box. I think, uh, I don't know. I feel bad. I think Al Madrigal's in it. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I heard he was that's, great. I, I mean, that's... <laughs> I'm yeah. not trash What a recovery. No, no. <laughs> Al Madrigal. Uh, yeah, Al Madrigal is great. Uh, that's so funny. I mean, that's crazy. They're like, all right, man. <laughs> uh, Titus Hall's Faster. Hello, folks. I to- totally understand a new dad making every mistake. When my son was born, we walked into the grocery store, and when we grabbed the cart, my wife asked, where is Laramie? Laramie. I was white as a ghost and realized I left my kid in the car. We rushed out to meet our content baby boy sleeping soundly. You'll be great parents. Keep up the great work, and thanks for entertaining this mailman. Uh, Yeah. I mean, that's a big fear. You leave it in the car. Have you done that before or anything like that? No, I haven't. But... You know, a lot of bad parents do. <laughs> and the, like Titus and like, Titus and Bates. Yeah, got, <laughs> well, I haven't done it. Yeah. Well, you're going to. Uh, <laughs> no, I no, I think people leave their yeah. I remember the the thing where you're going like, all right, you get to a point you're like you're running into like a convenient the gas station mm-hmm. and you're like, Do I go get her? You know, I'm just going or you pull up to like a little store and you're like, I'm just running there and going back. You're like you start doing that when you're mm-hmm. like, I'm just leaving her in the car for two seconds. Yeah. And then, you know, but at first you don't, and then you start doing it. But I, I, I he's not a bad parent. I, that's got to, I mean, wild amount of parents can do that stuff. And when you're first, when you're a new, you know, it is crazy. Like you're like, you forget to, it's a thing that you got to get into the habit of getting. Mm-hmm. I remember years and years ago as a kid, we all went to a football game as a family. And then we got home. We were sitting in the living room. Somebody was like, where's Daniel? It's my yeah. youngest brother. And my dad was like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> just totally forgot him at the game. Yeah. Had to drive back. He was just walking around alone in the dark. Yeah. He's like seven years old. I think, <laughs> yeah, like, that happens a ton. Uh-huh. And you're just, if you have a bunch of kids and you don't know, and you're just like, yeah, you forget. Is he the one that went to Purdue? Yeah, he's the one that oh, went to Purdue. Now we know. Now we know. That sheet. is true. Yeah. I would have went to Purdue, too. Uh, <laughs> you won't forget me now. Uh, yeah. I don't think you're, you know. I feel like you'll be sitting in the back seat with your kid. So me, I don't know. I just thought of that. That sounded like an insult. I don't know if it was or not, but it sounded very funny that you're just always in the back seat with your kid. Ruth drives everywhere. Someone's driving. Ruth's driving. You know, you're starting to. Not, it's you're going to get to a point where you can't drive. You know, they're like, hey, you shouldn't drive anymore. And then they. I forgot to mention when I got home. We got home from the hospital. I had to go pick up some medicine. We'd been in the hospital for four days. I was like, why do I smell gas? The squirrels had bitten through my gas line again. Again. Wow. Never got to the bottom of this. Apparently not. What did you do to get rid of them? We did everything people suggested. Put out fake snakes. We put out mothballs. We spray. I'm back to spraying now this yeah. rodent repellent. But Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to build a garage because it's going to cost me more. Yeah. The car repairs. I mean, just move i've never i don't know i just never it's so funny to never have this and you are getting a full-blown yeah, attack this is such a big problem I it's know. such a big problem did you order fake snakes on amazon or something did, how did, did okay yeah. and you laid those out all around the car we, we've got like two one by our car and one by our dad's car and her dad's like moving it now yeah thinks you know the snake he thinks the squirrels are onto it so yeah. he's moving it but he doesn't tell anybody so yeah. i'll just be going to the mailbox <laughs> and i just jump out of my skin because her dad's moved it <laughs> well then y'all are gonna get you're gonna have a real snake one day and be like come on and then grab it i know then, yeah 
Oh. For attracting snakes because they're yeah. like, oh, there's snakes just they like. They go, you know, I'll tell you where everybody's cool if you're a snake. <laughs> the old Bates house. Yeah. They're invited. They yeah, they don't care. They love it. Hawks uh, flying down. Yeah. Uh, Emma McPhail. McPhail. Did you skip Pete. Russell? Russell Gajos. Gajos. Gajos, probably. Aaron being flabbergasted that someone from another country would travel to Maryland was the exact amount of geography knowledge I expected from Nate Land. <laughs> if you're close enough to go to the Baltimore Aquarium, you're likely less than an hour from D.C., also known as the nation's capital. If you were to pick any other country in the world and tell people you were standing in near the capital city, that would make perfect sense. Only on Nate Land would that person be mocked for three minutes for being an idiot. Another classic. I like to say that's I did not mock You said only land. on Aaron Land. Oh, only on... Only on Aaron That's Land. That's right. On Nate Land, right. everybody treats you with the utmost respect. On Aaron <laughs> Land, we trash you. We're open-minded. Well, the guy didn't say, I'm, I am I vacationed in the D.C. area. He said, I went to Maryland. And it, If you go to Arlington, well, that's Arlington, Virginia, so that's right across. Yeah, you would say the D.C. area, right? Yeah. It, it, it didn't, I understand where Maryland is relative to D.C. Doesn't sound like you do. It's on the same <laughs> coast. Yeah. You know? And they're Maryland- and you're Aaron Land. You also have land. Maryland, Aaron Land. Maryland. This will be a Maryland podcast. And I guess <laughs> don't go listen to that because Aaron doesn't think it's worth it. Uh, I will only vacation in Maryland. So, Emma McPhail. Hello, folks. Pergelum may very well be the world's tallest operatic tenor, but my brother in law has got to be Nate Land's tallest fan at 7'1. Mm. My sister and he got married last year. She is 5'4 and is standing on the seat in the car. P.S. He's an accountant. There you Cole, go. Cole, there you go. Oh, wow. Oh, she's standing on the seat of the car. That's crazy. <laughs> and he's standing on the side yeah. of it kissing her, and they're they're, the their way. heads are level. Level. Yeah. Seven foot one. That's tall. Yeah. That's, wow. I don't think that's going to be beat. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's how, like, when I saw, like, Al, uh, talking about Al Wilson f in football, he's standing over him like a Ford Explorer, and he had his hands on the top of it. Like, it looked like, you know, like, you just, he was, like, relaxing on a table. Yeah, like a bar stool. But it was like a Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that's tall. Uh, congratulations on uh, getting married. That's a cool car. Uh, which one did you want? Let's just do this last uh, one. Melody Trippett. I bought airline tickets and rented a house for the Nate Land Live from Zanies. Then my boyfriend and I broke up. Mm. Now I have to try to find someone to go with me. I'm going to have to put up with them. I'm going to have to put up with them for four days. Melody Trippett. She wants someone to go with her. Uh, she got airline tickets and rented a house. So hmm. if anybody wants to go, I mean, but you, Melody, don't just take, you know, we don't want something. Yeah, we need a bit of a screening process here. Don't yeah. just take a random yeah, yeah. weirdo. Yeah, but maybe we Melody's the weirdo. Yeah, and the other maybe uh, you Stuck know what? Her boyfriend. How about the other three? Maybe go easy because you're like, well, what's Melody about? We don't know what anybody's about, you know. So, but Melody, you know, we'll get her. She'll reach out to you. We'll meet Melody at the show, uh, and hopefully, she finds get some friends. You know, get some friends mm -hmm. and uh, find a new boyfriend. Uh, next week so <laughs> <laughs> he got moved moving quick you know just be like oh man i think this has been going great he's like yeah these past couple days have been fun <laughs> would you like to get married and go to the nate land live from zany's i have a house uh for four days for four days uh see if you want to go do that that's uh yeah next week next week's the big next week live podcast also mike vecchione special we are taping uh and i'm directing mike vecchione special Mike was just with me this weekend. Mike's so funny. It's it's going to be so good. If you like my comedy, if you know, it's like if you get the idea of what we're doing here, uh, it's it's going to be. You will enjoy this, and it will be uh, uh, wonderful. Mike's an unbelievable comedian. Uh, I mean, I've been doing it for a very long time, uh, and just seasoned, and just it's super fun. So go to Zany's. Uh, seven nine thirty show. I want to say seven, you look. There's tickets. I think for both seven might be close. Nine thirty. Uh, but just come out to big help for us. It's the first thing uh, I'm doing as Nate Land Productions, and I'm happy to be you know 
I'm happy to start this venture off with Mike Vecchione. Something that I was like confident enough, like if it messes up, it will be my fault, not his fault. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, I got a lot to prove. Uh, awesome. All right. Folks, it's time for a little spring cleaning. Not your house, but your mental space. If you can have a few things going on, do not let them pile up until you are overwhelmed. You can start today. Talk space is more flexible, convenient, and an affordable way to get high quality care. It's good to talk to someone if you're out there, and especially during this COVID time, you know, you can get lost in your own thoughts and uh, that can send you down a wrong road. And you, if you get too far down that road, it's not a good thing. It's hard to get back. And so talk space is a good way. If you feel like you need to talk to someone, talk space is where you should go do it. That's the, you know, it's an easy way to do it. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You don't have to tell anybody if you're talking to anybody. Like, it's like, you're just working on yourself, like work on yourself in your own business Mind your own business. Try to make yourself, if you start feeling overwhelmed, they have 24-7 text, audio, and video messaging. Uh, talk space, that you talk to a licensed therapist. It's private, secure. If thoughts and emotions are piling up, a fresh perspective can help you feel better. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use promo code Nate during sign up to get $100 off your first month. That is $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code Nate. For many people, getting financially healthy means dropping the weight of credit card debt. But where do you start when it feels like you're stuck? Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly and easily with a personal loan so you can start living your life. Upstart does not look at your credit score alone. It models considered other things like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to help you find a better rate for your loan. You can check your rate without affecting your credit score in just five minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate. Don't forget to use our URL to let you know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. If you're a fan of this podcast, you already like learning great information from the world's foremost experts. Yeah. You can get more of that at Masterclass, a proud sponsor of Nate Land, with over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors. That thing you've always wanted to do is a little closer than you think. I've been watching, Aaron Sorkin did a writing one. Mm, and he talked uh, a lot yeah. about writing the West Wing. If you're a West Wing fan, you oh. like writing, it is very, very cool. You got a whole, ne a whole library of video. You can do it from your phone, your computer, smart TV, offering classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their fields. Whatever you're interested in, there is a master class for you. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every master class. And as a Nate Lane listener, because you're already an expert, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Nate now. That's masterclass.com slash Nate for 15% off. Masterclass. I've talked to you guys a lot about this. I've used Indeed mm -hmm. before, yeah. both as a guy looking for a job and as a guy hiring. It is the best tool to find talented people for your business. Uh, whether you're assembling you know, the right skills at your company, you, you need all the help you can get. That's Indeed. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. If you don't get somebody good, you don't pay. With Instant Match, as soon as you put a post up, you get a short list of quality candidates. You see their resume, see if they match your job description. You can invite them to apply right away. You do the interviews right through it. It's a one-stop shop to find all the talented people you need for your business. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to Indeed.com slash Nate to claim your $75 credit before April 30th. Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And finally, Nate Land is brought to you by Policy Genius. I need to get this set up. I have like done no adult stuff 
I'm married now. I got a house. I got to get on this. It's yeah. the one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. Go to policygenius.com slash Nate. Answer a few questions. You'll get some personalized quotes from top companies to find the lowest price. You could save 15%, 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. They don't add on extra fees. They don't sell your info to other companies. I'm always worried about that. They're just keep it and keep it on the DL. They have options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. You don't have to tell them how much you weigh. It's big for me. <laughs> Go to policygenius.com slash Nate to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Policygenius.com slash Nate. Do you, is that the is that the main thing you ask? Like you just go, they go, no, this sounds great. Or uh, I know you're looking at me. Do you want to know how much I weigh? And the, the guy goes, we don't do that here. You go, okay. you, you, just shake you, go, you take your head off. You go, you got yourself a client. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I mean that, that does. When you go to the doctor, you're like, I'll do it, but you're like, man, I hate that there's gonna weigh me. I'm going in for like a cold. And they're like, let's yeah, weigh but, them. But like you're, as we, you know, we make fun of you. I make, and we, I make fun of you a lot uh, <laughs> about it. Too. But I mean, I make fun of you because you've lost so much weight. It's uh -huh. insane. But like, so now, I mean, I don't, you're, even then, you're, you're a big dude. Like, uh, I don't think you would ever weigh under 200, right? Like, I mean, unless, I don't know, unless you got like ridiculously skinny. Oh, I don't know. I haven't been under 200 since probably sophomore year high school but i don't think you ever would i mean like you're tall you're right, right. you're just a big guy like it's like uh i would imagine 200 would even be healthy or is it i'm sure the thing might say under because they always say like yeah, what you're crazy. supposed to be based on your height mm -hmm. yeah if i were like 180 or something it would, i mean it'd you probably would be, look weird yeah. yeah it would be insane mm -hmm. yeah uh i would still do the fat stuff though i'd commit to it you know we're already in too deep I do like the idea of an insurance person to come over and he just sees you and he's like, no, we don't ask, but then he's trying to figure out your weight. <laughs> yes. And then he just like, you just film, like at one point he just tries to pick you up real quick. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, what are you doing? He goes, I thought something, dro I dropped something. And he's like. <sighs> Could you turn around for a second? He goes, yeah. And then they, that's what they write. They go, when you try to grab him, <laughs> how much of his shoes did you get off the ground? And he, you're like. And the guy's like, I mean, I think they went farther down. <laughs> and he writes that down. They don't have a number, though. Yeah. That, that's marked in. They went farther. And he, he's just he's like, hey, Aaron, you ever been skydiving? Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you have to pay extra? <laughs> yeah. And they ask you just those. They can't ask, we, we can't ask what your way is. Mm -hmm. uh, we can beat around the bush, though. Southwest. Isn't? You bring your own belt? <laughs> <laughs> who, brings, who, brings, who brings their own seatbelt extended? I think I got it. I think people should. You would do that. You just walk on it with it by yourself. You uh -huh. privately put it on. You don't have one. to wave <laughs> someone down. You Strapped just like a wrestler over yeah. your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, like a wrestling belt, and you just walk in. Be proud of it. Champion. You know, champion. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Being in it, trying to figure out the weight without being able to ask would be. We met with a uh, financial planner today. We're working out stuff for Eleanor, mm -hmm. and this was over Zoom. But I zoned out for a while. Yeah, and I'm usually pretty good. It's all your daughter's future, but go ahead. I know, I know, <laughs> and I'm pretty good usually. If someone like calls me on, like I can listen to the last thing they said and pick up yeah. on it. Uh huh. But today he said something I hadn't listened for a while, and then and then Ruth was like, "Yeah, what do you think, Brian?" And I could not pick up the cues. And the only thing I can remember him saying was POA, which I was like trying to think, what is POA? POA, POA which now I know is power of attorney, but uh -huh. I could not. And I was like, ah, "Yeah, I think we should do it." I have no idea what we yeah what we just think, signed up I for. I think we should yeah. do it. I think we should give her POA right now. Like, yeah. well, she's a little young for that, don't yeah. you think, Brian? Eleanor is going to be drafted <laughs> right when she turns 18. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> She's off to war. <laughs> I mean, yeah I, yeah. I just usually say, I go, say that one more time. Sorry. Uh, I was thinking about the earlier thing. You, mm -hmm. you like oh, say right. something like that, then they go. And if you're doing it over Zoom, you've got a million built-in excuses. Yeah. But I think it cut out there for a second. Can you do yeah. it? Can but you... she heard it perfectly. Oh. Well, but she's on Team U. So yeah, she wouldn't just out say, you to them. We just explain it one more time, and then you know, and then it could be you do you got, that. I think Ruth's having a little trouble understanding yeah, yeah. this. Can you explain it to her <laughs> yeah. for a little bit? Yeah, like like you're five years old. Explain yeah, it to me. 
Uh, I don't know if you can tell because the Zoom connection. My wife's a woman, so she's not getting it all. But could you tell her one more time? You just insult her and just keep going. And they're like, all right. Was it a woman or a man telling you? It was a man. Oh. Uh, so he'd have liked that probably. Yeah. Uh, he'd have liked. Is he old? No. Oh, he uh, wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> you need someone. I think My age or older? Someone your yeah, age. Yeah. Someone your age or older, I think, for, for you to make high-fiver through the yeah, screen. Yeah, make one of those jokes work. Uh <laughs> So this week, uh, we figured uh, Easter is coming up and taxes yeah. are coming up. So we're going to talk about Easter and taxes, which is a fun yeah. combination. Everyone thinks about them together. Everybody thinks about them together. Easter, you know. Do they always fall around the same time? Well, do you know when Easter falls? It's something based on uh, whenever the Pope wants to do it. No, we, didn't we talk about this on the calendar yeah, when episode? the Pope fills it out. He fills it out every year. So that's why sometimes they go to July because the Pope just goes, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it yet. He goes about, that's like the groundhog. It's groundhog. We just see when the Pope comes out and he goes, eh, six months to Easter. <laughs> yeah. And you go, oh, I already bought a basket. <laughs> Is it something to do with the, the sun? <laughs> Isn't it? So- the moon. Okay. Okay, so I'm not far off. Yeah, you laughed at him like that was dumb. And then you're like, I thought like, I was about to jump in and be like, this idiot. You think it's the sun? You're like, no, it's the moon. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't didn't know the sky was going to be involved. Well, the difference is I send him my notes. So I can tell how much you read. Well, I know enough. I got some stuff to pull up, but I also like a little lively discussion about it. (laughs) Yeah. Come on, Brian. Easter is the one holiday that, besides the spring, I have no idea generally. Like what? every other one, you can kind of guess. Mm-hmm. It's considered a movable feast. Okay. Meaning that... I'm listening. All right. Um, it can be anywhere between March 22nd and April 25th. March 22nd, April 25th. Wow. And it falls whenever the first Sunday after the first full moon after the start of spring. Okay. First Monday, no, first, first Sunday. Sunday after the first full moon mm-hmm. after the start of spring. Mm-hmm. So you just got to see where that full moon's going to be. Mm-hmm. So the Pope, does the Pope have to stay up every night? How do we know so early? You know what I mean? Like, would they not, would they get, like, how's the Pope not out there? And he goes, now, 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 now. And then we're like, go, 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 go. And like, you got to pick it. Yeah, I think we know ahead of time when it's going to be a full moon. So how far out do we know about the full moon? This says 5.7 million years. We already know that far out. That's what it says, according to this. I mean, <laughs> is space is space supposed to be this crazy thing? We already figured out quite a bit. We know <laughs> what the moon's doing forever. I just watched a thing about like what's going to happen to like where will Earth be in like mm. 10,000 years and five, you know, 5 million years, all mm. this stuff. And they're like, I don't know, maybe this, that, all this crazy stuff. You're like, well, we know what the moon's up to, <laughs> so why don't we just, you know, maybe buddy up with the moon and be like, well, you're a loser that doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do? I'll be right here just hanging out. Yeah, this is a full moon. Like, is it? Is it where, where it's where we're seeing it? Or it's full? Yeah, where you see the whole. Is that clouds? But it's like. Clouds don't count. See, I always thought. I only went off on clouds. So if clouds were covered, I'd go, well. You thought full moon just meant like there's no clouds in the sky? I don't think I ever thought. I never thought past it. And so I would only, if I could see the moon and it was full, I would notice it. And I only see it when there's no clouds. So I never counted it with clouds or not clouds. Yeah. Why would it really matter to me if there's yeah. As go, far as seeing it, you go. It's a full moon tonight. And you're like, well, that looks like a thumbnail up there. You're like, yeah, but it's clear skies. Yeah. So it's a yeah. full. Moon. Yeah. That's so what full I moons do. are much rarer to you. Yeah. You know, you want to see them here and there. <laughs> so what? What, what day's April, uh, Easter going to be? This is on the Gregorian calendar, right? Uh, March 22nd through April 25th. Someone wanted to do the Ethiopi- Ethiopian calendar. Yeah, somebody did suggest that. What is? It? Yeah, their calendar must be crazy. Yeah, I think we maybe mentioned it briefly on the calendar, but yeah. Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates Easter on the Julian calendar. So theirs is April 4th through May 8th. Their range. Yeah. What is Ethiopian? Oh, e- Ethiopian calendar is seven years behind. Where is that? In the question. 
A gap of seven to eight years between the Ethiopian and Gregorian calendars result from an alternative calculation in determining the date of the Annunciation. Okay. This is how you say it? <laughs> no, not this. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, not the, they spent seven to eight not, years arguing no, like how well how do you pronounce it you go you're not saying not, it right not the, <laughs> and he goes and they and it was just seven to eight years of like oh my gosh uh he's like the ethiopian you're like we're never gonna get to the bottom of this and they would leave until finally we all agreed ethiopian and everybody goes on the table ethiopian okay we can start how far back are we seven eight years <laughs> I don't know what y'all been doing in this room. <laughs> not, the, not the pronunciation, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't agree on how to pronounce it. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. You're like, yeah. well, why don't we just get started and everybody can say it how they want to say it. They go, no, 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 no. We're not. We will start it when everybody can agree how we speak it. And it took seven to eight years, finally got through. <laughs> and they go, we're begin. And they started at 01. You're like, dude, the other places are so far ahead of they're us. They're at eight. They're at eight already. And we look ridiculous. And they go, do we? Yeah. We're the only ones saying it right. And maybe they are right. They're all enunciating yeah, it differently. They're all enunciating it different. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. That's so, exactly. that was, that was, who that wrote it? Someone wrote it in. So whoever wrote that in, that was good. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I feel like we maybe. But why? Why? So what is that? I thought we talked about this on the calendar episode. I know, like Afghanistan, know. they're different than us. They're behind. I thought they were like six hundred years or something behind. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. We can't even agree on that. It's not a good sign. So what? What does that mean? The results from the Annunciation. The Annunciation of Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. <laughs> uh, so they just think it was a different time. Yeah, they had a different calculation for when that yeah. happened. Okay. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know what that meant. <laughs> Did you think it meant pronunciation? I didn't, know, I didn't think it meant pronunciation, <laughs> but I didn't know what it, it meant. Yeah. So I'm glad you were here. <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. Sometimes you don't know what it means. It's good to just guess, and maybe that'll be funny for people to listen to. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe a fun joke. Oh, it was. Throw it out there. It hilarious. <laughs> I'm just telling Brian, he's like, if he doesn't know what it means, like, yeah, that's when you uh, make a joke about it. You don't just sit and wait for the Notre Dame grad to come in and his whole education is just knowing what these words that is, mean. That's a big part of it, yeah. Yeah. So this is... Uh, Do people use enunciation a lot? You've heard it like it's the resurrection, annun- yeah. the annunciation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, I guess. The assumption. Yeah. I don't. I truly don't think I pay attention to... Mm-hmm. I don't... I think I'm I'm day by day. Do you guys do Lent? Do you do Lent? That's Catholic. Up? No, yeah. is my, that just a Catholic? Yeah, I think my parents might have when they were. You okay, know. if they grew up that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my dad would. Mm-hmm. But so we you were, didn't give anything up or anything before Easter. No, we usually did more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a time to turn it on. Yeah. No, we didn't. No, I remember like Catholics doing it, and it was always like I guess you know it would be, but I, people did it to like. I feel like it gets to like people just trying to lose weight or something. That's I mean, what it turns it? Yeah. into. Yeah. We did it real strictly as kids, but yeah. I don't know. I just stopped, yeah. stopped caring about it. I'm not it against much. it. I almost wouldn't make mine getting Harper to do it just to, just to like, you know, builds that kind of like, I don't know, self control builds the, right. this is not about you. It's mm-hmm. not about, you know, it's, you're giving something up that you like. You give up like Cokes or yeah. candy or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Or uh, my dad. Y'all was, drink a lot of Cokes at like seven, eight years old, six. A little older than that, maybe. In yeah. the bottle? Early tens. Early tens. You know? Yeah. Drink some Diet Cokes, yeah. stuff like that, you know? Imagine. <laughs> 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 I love. I mean, I think I might have too, but it just it is very funny to think. Like, yeah, they don't want. No one wants you to drink any cokes now. And like back then, you're, you're like, like, I gotta give yeah. them up. I mean, man. you're it's just gonna be seeing, tough. Yeah, kids, five year olds have Diet Mountain Dew. Now you can tell. You can always tell when Easter's coming up because you start seeing on TV, you start seeing commercials for the fillet of fish. Oh, really? At McDonald's. That's why they started selling that because Lent. Catholics are not supposed to eat meat on Fridays yeah. during Lent, so they start pushing that fish sandwich. So it's people that are going to McDonald's every day. It's a big Catholic population that only eats at McDonald's. 
and they McDonald's sales were just getting crushed on that Friday. So they go, we got to come up with something. These people have a problem. They're not going to. They're not not coming here. Mm-hmm. So let's give them another option. We got to give them. Yeah, we got to let them know we have a meat free, delicious option yeah. here. And all the other fast food restaurants started following suit. Yeah, you know, it's it's that big of a own, thing. Yeah, there's a lot of Catholics. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. About a billion. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know Is how it many. The most. Are... Now we talked about. There's more. Yeah. Uh, we're more Muslims. Yeah. Than than just Catholics, but all Christians together. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I think there's more. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we're all the same boat. Essentially. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all going the same way. Yeah. Y'all might be in different cars. Y'all's parties a little bit more, and then has to do <laughs> weird stuff because y'all's just maniacs, and then you have to go like, well, okay, give up all this stuff for this, and you're like, how about you just live a reasonable life <laughs> yeah, you- and not get drunk during church on there you Sunday? Go. Yeah. And maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. Did you do Ash Wednesday? We do Ash Wednesday. You still every, do that? That's what starts Lent. But do you do the Ash on the forehead? That's what they do every Ash Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. The Mass. Would you ever, if they, y'all were lazy, just like put a match out at home and and pretend that you went to Mass yeah. that day? That's pretty smart. Uh, I bet people could do it. Thought of doing that. Yeah. yeah. They take the the Palms Palm Sunday. Yeah. Is the Sunday before Yesterday. Easter? Yeah. yeah. Where they give everybody palms at Mass. Yeah. And then they burn those palms, and that's where the ash comes from for Ash Wednesday, the next year. Yeah. Oh, the next year. Yeah, so that's like palm ash that you're putting on your okay. putting on your forehead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does anyone ever mistake, like, you just have something on your... Because I've seen, I mean, I'm serious, I've seen people, and I first first thought is like, oh, they've got something on their forehead they don't right. even know. It's fun to see, like, Tony Reale on Around the yeah, Horn yeah. every he year. Does it. He always yeah. has it on his forehead. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're uh, yeah. I, mean, it was, I, I like it. You, I would see a lot of people like in New York. You just see it. Yeah, I mean, everywhere. People, they just walk around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But everybody knows. I mean, you just then you see it so much that you're like, yeah, you're just not. Don't even think you don't anything, think anything it. about it. Mm-hmm. But Lebanon, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you would have been like, well, I never saw it in Lebanon. Yeah, no, no. So you would have, yeah, if you left here, you'd be like, mm-hmm. did you ever see it anywhere? I mean, it was when I was living in Nashville, and yeah. one of my coworkers, and I'm like. I, should I tell him that he's got an ink on his head or yeah. just let him go yeah. about? And then I realized later that's a little cross symbol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But so this is Holy Week. Every day is yesterday was Palm Sunday. Wednesday. You know what Wednesday is? No, I don't. Spy Wednesday. What a spy Ooh. Wednesday. Because Judas was a spy. Wow. So we get to do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. What do you do there? What do you do? I've never heard of this. I think it's called maybe something else, but uh... basically Spy Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you like, joking about it? No, I'm serious. Oh. I'm serious. Okay. In Christianity, Holy Wednesday commemorates the bargain of Judas by a clandestine spy among the disciples. It is also called Spy Wednesday or Good Wednesday or Great and Holy Wednesday. Yeah, Spy Wednesday sounds the best. Out yeah, of all it sounds the fun. best. But I think you're gonna do. I mean, is it like? Uh... You know, like, hey, let's have some fun today. I don't think it's like a fun day, no. Yeah. None of these, Holy Week, none of these days are f- that fun. I don't understand why. So Good Friday is to commemorate the resur- I mean, the crucifixion. Right. Why do they call it Good Friday? It seems like it should be called Bad Friday. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a good and, thing that he did. You and know? Easter yeah. should be called Good Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like. One of the disciples didn't watch the news that day, and he <laughs> showed up. Yeah. Good Friday, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Did you hear the news? Yeah. So it's just good because of it's good. what he sacrificed. Right. It was what he did. It yeah. was ultimately good. It is always funny, yeah. the name, though, because it's like the worst thing had, yeah. that could happen. Well, it's Good Friday. Monday, Thursday? You guys know that? Monday? Am I saying that right? I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard that. Is that right? Monday. Monday, Thursday. It's um, Sounds like you get like... Half off poppers <laughs> at a Chili's. <laughs> I mean, like, y'all going to Monday, Thursday? What's that? Half off margaritas. <laughs> well, all right. If you got a cross, you get you get one free. Buy one, get one free. Get one, a bogo. Yeah, bogo. Yeah. Monday, Thursday. Monday is Latin for mandate, and Jesus gave us a mandate to love each other. Oh, okay. So. I thought he's going to, to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Even back then, a mask mandate. Yeah, mask mandate. You're like, God, dang, gum it, Jesus. He goes, Well, it's just 
you know, you never know. <laughs> the last supper they all had the bath. <laughs> <And then, laughs> Put it back we, up between bites. Can we take them and eat? He goes, well, just chew and if you don't mind. <laughs> we all got to sit on the same side of this table. Yeah. <laughs> so Easter was a pagan holiday that the Catholic Church just kind of took over because they're like, we could get these pagans to get on board with us. We could add some. Right. You can still have your party, but let's, uh, let's funnel it to something good here. So yeah, Easter, it comes from the goddess, a story, the goddess of spring and fertility. Okay. And then Catholics just like bought it almost. <laughs> like purchased the they holiday? Bought the yeah. Rights. Like, yeah. It was it, you know, it's a little bit like Halloween, where it's, it's like AT and T buying Directv. Like you're like <laughs> a, merger. It's a merger. Yeah, it's a merger, <laughs> and then we just. But we're gonna keep our name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, crush the pagans. Yeah, they're not anywhere anymore. You know, yeah. like you, you, you don't see them or hear about them as much. Mm -hmm. And if they would have held on to this holiday on their own, they would have been. Mm -hmm. They'd be killing it. They'd be killing it right They'd now. They'd be doing okay. I bet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We kept their brand name, but we run everything. So the the reason we do I never knew this the Easter eggs yeah and the Easter bunny and all that mm -hmm. I always wonder what they're associated with it's all about fertility and spring bringing new life and Jesus rising from the grave yeah okay so eggs are birth rabbits are known to be good procreators so yeah. they think that's where yeah. all that came from hmm. it fits but I mean it fits because it would I there's no other way I would know yeah yeah w where do where do the where's the Easter Bunny get the eggs from? Because it doesn't make eggs. Easter bunnies don't. No, no. I think I think I would have probably just assumed it. I googled that today. I've never. Yeah, <laughs> I, to rapid slay eggs. Yeah, I would have done that because I thought they would ask, and I'm like, yeah. I'm 99 percent sure they don't, but yeah. I want to uh -huh. make sure. See, that's how fun's that. I think a couple mammals do. It's not. It's not a crazy thought. A marsupial. So marsupial, yeah, platypus. Uh, they lay eggs. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is, what is a bunny? It just has the it just bunny? yeah, bursts it live. I, I'm yeah. guessing it bursts a litter like a cat yeah. does. Yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah. pregnancy phase is 30 days. And then so oh yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, I thought they sat on them, <laughs> kept them warm, <laughs> made them colors. Yeah, yeah, painted them. <laughs> this one's blue and yellow. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we don't know the gender, but we know the race before it's born. <laughs> <laughs> it's an egg. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so the Germans brought over the Eastern Bunny to, the, to America in the 1700s, but okay. it was their tradition there. Oh, so this was not even pagan. German just goes, hey, we do this. Yeah. Do you want to do this? Yeah. And it just kind of spread here. But the reason is because rabbits are... It's so crazy. How do they spread in all this? Like, just some, what German comes up and goes, ah, oh, y'all do Easter? He goes, we do, like, bunnies and stuff. And he goes, oh, man, we should try to do that. Well, you know, and I bet it, it's like your I guess it is. You start doing it. Yeah. You don't want to be the one family left yeah. out. Or you like it. You go, I yeah, like that. Yeah, and he represents nice. this, and you start gathering it. And uh -huh. then, But we're not introducing any more new stuff, right? Like, there's not uh, someone going, what if we do, you know? Um, you know, Elf on the Shelf's fairly new. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. They didn't have that when you're growing up. <laughs> we didn't have Santa Claus when I was growing yeah. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but originally, they uh, had nest instead of baskets. Easter egg. They had Easter nest, and they they would decorate them and color them, but they put them in nest. And I guess they they were supposed to come from the Easter Bunny. Interesting. Yeah. You can still kind of see that because the Easter baskets are like usually wicker baskets that look like nests. And then the, that green stuff on the inside looks like it makes me think grass. of a nest. Yeah. It looks yeah. Like, I guess it is grass. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like a nest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So the White House does the Easter egg roll every year. Mm -hmm. It's the Monday after Easter. That started in the 1800s where kids would go up on Capitol Hill and see who could roll an egg down the furthest without it breaking it became such a tradition that 10,000 children did it one day on Capitol Hill and congressmen and lawmakers were so upset that they were disrupting stuff and getting up they were damaging the lawn and stuff like that that they passed the turf protection law to prevent kids or anyone from coming on Capitol grounds unannounced that's still in effect and um, 
Two years later, though, the president, Ruther B. Hayes, told the guards, just let the kids come into the White House backyard and do it here. Oh, that's ever, cool. And ever since, it's been in the White House. Yeah. They roll an egg down the hill? Mm-hmm. My dad did a show uh, once at the White House for Easter, I believe. Uh, now it's a big thing. They bring yeah. in bands and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Celebrities. Yeah. But that's how it started in the late 1800s. Wow. Hmm. That's cool. Um, Easter is the second best-selling candy holiday in America after Halloween. Yeah, it's a good ca- it's a good candy day. You got a favorite? I mean, sour patch kids, but are, uh, also those uh, those other gummy worms that are our gummy bears. Haribo, Haribos that are the sour ones. Oh yeah, yeah. For Easter? Uh, no, those just for just every day. <laughs> those are like amazing too. Uh, I've cut down on sour because I mean I'm I'm losing weight which by the way i'm i'm well i don't know what i'm at but i'm probably close to 180 all right i was at 194 how's it going for you right it was doing pretty good till i had a baby <clears throat> right things have yeah. kind of shifted the wrong direction now yeah well or maybe the right direction you know yeah. maybe you've reprioritized things in your <laughs> yeah. life it's a, a lot of bit. late night eating i'll say that yeah uh, okay uh 16 billion jelly beans are made in the u.s each year just for easter it surprises me that easter is bigger than valentine's day for candy I probably would have bet my life that Valentine's Day was two. Hmm. It's only chocolate though. Like Valentine's, it's like that's really the only thing it nah, is. You got the you got the little sweet tart things that say be mine. Yeah, on but them. it's not a but it's 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 a flowers, it's chocolates, it's like kind of the same thing. Where Easter is you're getting Skittles and you know, gummy stuff and all that. I would have thought more people celebrated Valentine's Day than Easter. That's because you don't have kids. And like, uh, yeah. I, it, it, I, you think like Valentine's Day is like a big deal, and then you're you don't care about it at all. We don't even talk to each other on Valentine's Day, so that's the present. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> no, nah. I've always worked on Valentine's Day. Valentine's yeah. is always a good day to work. Now people go out on dates, but it's like usually kids are not involved, and then so Easter's about children. So it's about when you do something for you know when you buy something for your wife, like it's like gonna be flowers. It's gonna be uh i mean i'm not saying i would have known this for sure but when mm-hmm. you think about it it's it makes sense easter's like you go if you go home and you go see all the your you know there's grandkids and all this stuff it's it's a bunch of kids and yeah. like you're hiding eggs each egg has a gum uh something in it you okay. know it's like kind of the door wheel thing maybe you'd want to talk about it for a long time <laughs> with you and your friends as y'all sit and accomplish nothing uh <laughs> Do y'all do a big Easter egg hunt with your family? We do. We have our family's all about games, so we make everything a game. Everything's something. What if we do this? Let's do this. Uh, I've realized I do it, and I don't ever. I never thought about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I do it. My family, we will. It's you know when we go. If I we swim, the kids were like, all right. I mean, I got when we went on vacation a couple weeks ago or something. I get in. With our neighbors, the neighbors' girls and Harper, and I'm like, all right, who can swim underwater back? Like, it's never just like chilling out. It's like, <laughs> let's try to do something. Yeah. Everything's a big game. Uh, so we do it. My, we do now. We hide the eggs for all the kids, and then they. But the eggs just have. It's whoever gets the most eggs, and then we let them go pick candy. So instead of the candies in the eggs, it's like they come up yeah. to us, and then. We let them, you know, and it's a big, they get to choose it. We have it out there and yeah. they do like a snake kind of. So, okay. uh, is there a golden egg? I think there is. Yeah. Like, there's a few that have like money in it, $5 or something. Yeah. Which the kids just throw away now. It's like <laughs> a waste of my time. <laughs> no, Inflation. $5. Yeah. Well, Bitcoin's where it's at. $20 is the new $5. God. I mean, I don't, we don't, we get $5, but I just feel like kids are, I, I mean, I got paid five bucks to mow the grass and that was a lot. And I remember being like, five dollars meant a lot to me. Mm-hmm. And I think to mow to get a kid mow the grass now, I, I mean, you would have to be twenty. I would bet, like, because that's going to at least feel like a lot to the kid. See, that's what I was getting paid when I was 20? twenty. Twenty, twenty five bucks when I was in middle school. I got paid five. <laughs> I didn't get paid on my yard. I didn't even cover the gas. Dude. <laughs> well, I mean, this was just my this was my neighbor's yard. Okay, she paid me five dollars. My, I, my, you got paid to mow your own yard? No, this is the guy up the street. Yeah, but I'm saying that doesn't even you're you don't even come out in the black if you're only getting five bucks now. Is there's no business? This is not a business back then. This was, 
She was an older lady. There's a mix of that. She paid five dollars. I did it for that reason. Okay. But I don't even think back then I there was you were thinking of it like a full on business. There's too much business mind. Th- like sometimes it's like you're doing stuff to be like you're just doing it to make five dollars. I didn't pay for the gas. Like I get the mm-hmm. idea of teaching someone. Oh, you got to charge this much to get the gas. But when we did it, it was like I'm hell. It was I'm, I'm either gonna have to mow this yard, this lady's yard for free. I, we would have. I, I would have mm-hmm. had to do that. Yeah. And then instead of doing that, it's like I think she wanted to pay, so I'd go up, Miss Gibbons, and I'd go up, and she just a little. She pulled a little thing out, hand me five dollars, and it was a lot. You just I actually rip it up and throw it. Thanks no, for nothing. no, five dollars was a lot. Yeah. I remember it being. It was. Uh, it was like man, five dollars was. You know, maybe you would have thought a dollar. I mean, you know, something would have been not a much, but five dollars was. Yeah, it was a lot. The largest Easter egg hunt ever, 500,000 eggs, mm. searched by just under 10,000 children at Cy- Cypress Gardens in Winter Haven, Florida. It's Dude. probably still mowing over some of those eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <deesh. laughs> yeah. um, Cadbury eggs, you guys fans of those? I haven't had one in a long time. I don't think I am, but uh, I would try it again. Yeah, I'm not a, not a big cream-filled something guy yeah that's what they are what are these oh cadbury mm-hmm. i put canterbury like canterbury tales yeah well, that's dumb <laughs> <laughs> what are these these are just this chocolate is the eggs. stuff that y'all don't talk them? about in school you talk about enunciation but you don't <laughs> you don't talk about just what the what you, you call the the little, true meaning of the Easter. little people eat no i'm saying that you're you're you are so highbrow at notre dame uh-huh that someone goes, do you ever have Caner- Cadbury eggs? And you are just like, you know, everybody's came from money, and they're like, I ate real eggs. Is that what you mean? And you're like, no, nah, this is what poor people eat. <laughs> we go to Walmart, we steal them. <laughs> we each take a lick, and you are and you would just look down. We just pass one around, us non-college educated folk, and then you're up there. You ride your horse home from Notre Dame. There was a game in the Middle Ages, they said, where the priest would have all the boys pass an egg around, and whoever at midnight had it in their hand got to actually eat it. <laughs> the rest of them went home hungry. What time would they start it? Um, I, I don't know. You didn't think to look into that? Well, that looks, I mean, that sounds like the worst game of all time. Yeah, I mean, time. what time? Well, they started at 11 o'clock. They started at 11.59. Yeah. It's, it's like question. musical chairs, but the winner gets yeah. to eat. Yeah. And the it's rest of the fun. kids just starve. Yeah. Do you know the commercial where the kid goes, thank you, Easter Bunny, bark, bark? <laughs> Do you know that? I don't know. Maybe. It's a famous commercial yeah, from I my think era. So. Yeah, yeah. I think it so. I think aired it, during yeah. the A-team? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it did. But Chocolate Bunnies is the most sold. And yeah. where do you start on the on the anatomy of the bunny when you eat it? Take the head off first. Dehumanize it as quickly as possible. Oh, God. That's the strong. It seems <laughs> aggressive. Sure, boss? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Start at the toes and what just torture you, it to death? What do you do? You tie it up in a chair first and <laughs> get all the answers you want, <laughs> and then you eat, bite the head off. I go right in. It's like it's it's what's the most humane way to put down an animal? Yeah. You just gotta bite it off at the neck. So you could fit ears and head into your mouth. Well, it depends on what we're talking I mean, about, but I would try. Like, and that's how far, yeah. I could see that being your answer. You don't want to eat the little stuff. You're like. Let's jump right You're like, in. I'm going to eat the head. And then you're like, okay, but you got to get to the ears. And you're like, oh, don't worry about those ears. Yeah. I'll get them. I'll, I'll get them. Right. Yeah, you kind of stumped me here. because I'll figure a way in. It says 76% of Americans bite off the ears first. They did not mention the head yeah. as a whole. So he's a part of that. And he's also that other percentage that goes ahead and gets that head out of the way. <laughs> So whatever that is, seventy six. It's like it's seventy six percent is on its own, and then there's this other like one guy. There's gonna be a, there's yeah. gonna be a group of guys in the the walk in cooler that are like, y'all do the head too, right? And they go, yeah, obviously, dude. You go, yeah, yeah. Y'all are afraid to talk about it outside of the walk in cooler, but you go inside and be like, hey, y'all, y'all eat the head too. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I always buy one. I was, you know, uh, I don't remember ever going like it never. I don't remember if I ever was like I'm a, such a the opposite kind of fan of candy. 
But I do like it, and I would eat. I would eat it now for sure. I get one for Harper, and because it's you know it's kind of it's a classic. I will say the those variations of the candy bars for the Easter, they do them for Christmas too. The different shapes, mm-hmm. I think they taste better. I don't know what it is. Candy bars for Easter. I, like, I think oh, in yeah. like the Reese's, yeah. that's in the shape of yeah. an egg. Yeah. That's better than a regular. I would Reese's. always get Reese's. My parents would always give me. They still do give me Reese's cups. Hmm. And then yeah, they they do taste. Some, you know, I don't really eat Reese's about. cups now outside of that Easter. But yeah. if I have them, but so I mean, like, I'm all about sorry. I mean, I'm just too much gummy. I'm gonna get some. I'll go crazy Easter. Yeah, I'll probably be a little cheat day. I'll get some of those Haribo. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Harbo. Haribo. 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 Sounds Haribu. like a, yeah, like caribou. Yeah. Sounds like a beer. There's some kind of Haribo gummy bears. Like, sounds like you make it on your own. Yeah. You know what a hair, what's it, how's it called? Haribo. Haribo. Yeah. You're talking about Haribo? And I'm like, no, no, no. My buddy Haribo, he makes this, uh, these gummy bears. <laughs> you go, oh, okay. So that's, uh, that's Easter. All right. That wraps it up. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> I think so. That's, not a lot, that's a lot, not of, good a lot stuff. of Jesus talk, though. Oh, you want more Jesus talk? Well, there well, just wasn't much. Let's talk about the Annunciation real yeah. quick. I'll say this. There are two artifacts from the crucifixion that are supposedly in museums now. Yeah. The crown of thorns is at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Ooh, Paris. Wow. And, that's crazy. And um, it survived that fire that from a couple of years ago, the one that Graham talked about. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the Shroud of Turin, I think is how it's pronounced, mm-hmm. which is the veil that was put over Jesus' face yeah. in the tomb. It's, um, it's at some monastery or something like that in Turin, Italy, and wow. it shows the outline of his face. Of, of what I they like, think is that, yeah. Is, uh, is that, can you see it? Can you go see it? I think so. Um, yeah. Man, that's crazy. You know, it's debated about whether that's actually it. I think yeah. they did some carbon dating, and, and it showed it came from the Middle Ages. But yeah, uh, but some people believe that. Have you heard of this, Aaron? I have. Yeah, that that's the image of Jesus. The crown of thorns is. I mean, that's that's pretty wild. Yeah, have you heard that? Mm-mm. I never even heard that. Yeah. and I, I mean, I don't know if it's how authentic it is, but it's on display at the cathedral at Notre Dame. Wow. Hmm. Or a. Yeah, Catholics were big on uh man, we love relics. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. First, you know the That's a pretty like, good so you say most Baptists would have thrown away the crown of thorns. <laughs> Not the by now. Who needs this thing? Been, he goes next. <laughs> what about the crown of thorns you wore? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who is gonna want to see that? <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Yeah. Beat it. Yeah. We got this cross over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look how big it is. Where are you gonna put it? Where are you gonna put it? Give me a sandal. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. We love things. You've kept Statues. them better. I'll say that. Yeah. I remember my mom had a necklace with a little piece of a saint's tooth in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if non-Catholics are doing that. You wouldn't have a necklace with somebody's tooth. We had in like it. A, uh, alligator teeth. <laughs> Dinosaur teeth. You know, T-Rex teeth. <laughs> We did stuff like that. Oh, your puka shell necklace? You throw one of those on there? Yeah, we were just buying more stuff that you'd see at like Panama City or something like that. <laughs> like we weren't, yeah, I don't know if we had. I, I have uh, that cross that's from, uh, it's got sand in it, in the back of it. Sand from what? Uh, Jerusalem. Oh, that's cool. I think. Did your parents yeah. bring you that? Yep. That's yeah. really cool. And then there's a smaller one beside it. They both come from there? I think so. Uh, I know the big one does, but my parents, uh, yeah, I would love you to, might to look at it, look at the back of it, and then uh, it might say it. This, I'm just, I can't focus. I can't. Sometimes I get, I get something, and I just forget. Now, no, it's only twenty five dollars. Kmart. Yeah. <laughs> now they're saying they're saying it. This is the sand. Oh, that from, is really cool. Yeah. I yeah. would love to go to the Holy Lands. Yeah, I would too. There's a little sand right there. I think they'd sell it for more than twenty-five dollars, but Jerusalem. I was right. Yeah. So there you go. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. So right. yeah, let's uh, throw it like I'm joking. Frizz me in a way. I would never do it. Like all the hats, like my Notre Dame hat <laughs> go, over there. Yeah. <laughs> Take this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's Easter. I can answer any questions if anybody wants. But 
Are uh, you like an expert on it? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an expert. On Easter? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't think of any. Do you have any? I think you covered just about everything, man. I think I'm I'm ready. All right, let's move on to taxes. <laughs> Do you know when tax day is? April 15th. April 18th. It is generally April 15th. This year, it's April 18th. There you go. We're both right. Yeah, but it's always 15th. It is. Oh, he meant this year. Yeah, why is it 18 this year? Because COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. Yeah. No, in Washington, D.C., this year, Emancipation Day is on the 15th. Oh. So the IRS moved it to the 18th. Oh, yeah, that was nice just of them. move it. You can't move any of your tax stuff around, but they're like, yeah, we're going to move the day a couple of days. Yeah. You go to jail yeah. if you just moved your stuff around. And they're like, we'll move it a couple of days. It's actually the 19th in Maine and Massachusetts this year because they're celebrating well, just, Patriots Day. Can we just do whatever we want now? Yeah, why do we let that? Because yeah. of Patriots Day? Mm-hmm. Like the No. What is Patriots Day? The <laughs> day Tom Brady retired. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a day to honor all the Patriots that have served <laughs> throughout the years. But in Maine and Massachusetts I this year, it's on the 18th. Patriots Day, the movie. Yeah. Well, anyway. I don't think it's anything to no, do it with says the a holiday right there. Oh, it commemorates the battles of Lexington Concord. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. It's a Revolutionary War thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you get, uh, um, you file your taxes. You get, you can get an extension if you want by six months. And I think if you request it, you automatically get it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. But you know, the annoying part of the extension is you still have to tell them what you're going to have to pay them. They go, we'll give you an extension, but like, what are you going to owe us? And you're like, I don't know. That's why I'm extending yeah. this because so I don't feel this. like doing it. Yeah, I do it almost every year because I forget <laughs> yeah. Yeah. until it's too, <laughs> it's too late. I go, I need that extension. But they go, you still got to tell us what like what's going to happen. And I go, I haven't done it yet. So you just guess, and then you got to. You're talking to someone on the phone? No, this no. is me. Yeah, yelling at my computer screen. It's called the IRS. <laughs> Hello. Aaron Weber. Oh, oh boy. Go. He called back. Here we go. Uh, yeah, need a couple more days. Uh, <laughs> if you don't mind, I just have been busy with, they're like, work? You're like, no, not work. Not, not work. work. <laughs> trying to not hide your money. Yeah. Not working. <laughs> I didn't say anything about work. You said work. <laughs> We've been vacationing in Maryland. <laughs> My family has a farm up there. <laughs> That they were given. That they were given. <laughs> on Patriots Day. Yeah. Uh, you still have to pay, pay taxes on that farm given to you, by the way. Mm. It's mm. inheritance tax. Oh. Ooh, unless it was a one-time gift to your spouse, according to the Shawshank Redemption. That's <laughs> where I learned about that. For me. Uh, that's just a minor point. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jack Swiger, one of the... Uh, uh, astronauts on Apollo 13. Oh, played by Kevin Bacon in the movie. He was a last minute addition. Right. Forgot to do his taxes. Had a call down to Mission Control and to s- ask them to call in for an extension. Wow. And they thought he was joking, but he's like, I'm serious. <laughs> you have to yeah. let them know because I forgot. And yeah. they did. Yeah, they gave they him did. an exemption because he was out of the country. Yeah. That's the exemption. Is that what they said? Oh, did you know that? I know it from the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. We watched that movie together. I don't remember that part. Yeah, it's when things are going bad, he calls in and he's like, hey, they're going to give you an extension, Jack, because you are most decidedly out of the country. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. It's a good moment. So if you get a refund and you don't claim, you have three years to claim it. So this coming Monday, April 18th, if you had a refund in 2018, that's your deadline or you lose it. And there's $1.5 billion worth of unclaimed tax refunds waiting for 1.5 million Americans. And if they don't go get it, it goes in the Department of Treasury. They and then what it. do they use that for? Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now it says 1.5 million Americans who did not file their tax returns that year. I don't understand how they know they're getting a refund if they didn't file tax returns. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it's advertised. Uh, <laughs> that money just goes back to like, yeah. where does it go? Like some people, I get the, like if you moved and you didn't alert yeah. them. And they can't find you. Yeah. Then it goes in the Department of Treasury. You lose it. Or some people think, "Hey, I earn so little, they're not gonna hunt me down." Yeah. If I don't do taxes, let's just not do them. Even you if know. you were getting money back. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, there's got to be some people not doing taxes. Like, 
I never know. I don't know how to do taxes. Yeah. I don't even know how I would even know how to start it. Yeah. yeah. And like, I, you know, when you first start, you're either parents are doing it or then you're for you. And then or you're, you go to like wherever, mm-hmm. you know, and get it done. What is it? Uh, TurboTax? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I did TurboTax for a while and I just had like a regular job. Comedy starts to complicate things so much oh, yeah. where I got, I got like dozens and dozens of these forms. So I, I started going like an H&R block somewhere like that. Yeah. And I just go, here's all the stuff. I'm here to answer any questions. Yeah. But you go ahead and knock all Stepped this out it up for me. a little bit. Uh-huh. You're at TurboTax, and you're like, this career's kind of taking off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got to go to H&R Block. I need to know someone that can handle it. I want to go to H&R Block. H&R Block, that's where Garth Brooks goes. Yeah. <laughs> so from what I've heard, I hear you guys have Garth Brooks. Yeah. I've been on the road a lot at the <laughs> local Funny Bones, and... Here's my taxes. Yeah. And I get the H&R Block at a strip ball in Mount Juliet. Yeah. That's where Garth Brooks goes yeah. <laughs> to get things handled. Are they good? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I went for two years to Jackson Hewitt because it was very close to where I lived. And they just hired seasonal workers. And, I mean, it was scary. The first year, I'm like, this is crazy. These people, I'm giving them all my information. Because they look like they were just on a work release program. Yeah. And then the next year, again, I rolled around. I'm like, well, I ain't going to go. I mean, they're right down the street. I probably got that one bad person. And I went in there again. It was the same thing. Oh, man. And I'm like, I don't feel comfortable coming here anymore. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. So you went back to TurboTax? <laughs> no, now I have a real accountant. But, okay. But for two years, I tried them. And I mean, I think I knew more than they did. Did it work, though? I mean, they fixed it where I got a refund. Yeah. <laughs> If I get audited, I'm going to jail because yeah. they don't get blamed for it. I did. Yeah. I'm the one who signed it. Yeah, yeah. I was owing, and I was like, "That's weird." I get a refund every year, and then I was like, "Oh, I left one document at home, and I live next door." And when I came back, he's like, "I fixed it. You're getting a refund." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this is questionable if you should even be talking about this <laughs> on this podcast. Uh, like where he goes. <laughs> Hey, can I used to go in there and go? Uh, that'd be funny, Jackson Hewitt. <laughs> like, go, you got, go to come to Jackson Hewitt. Hewitt, you're like, do you want a refund? We'll get one for yeah. you. And he goes, yeah, we'll, we'll, f- we'll figure it out. What do you want? And if I you sit down, you get him all your papers, and he just goes, just before I even get started, what do you do? You want a refund, or would you like to pay a little bit so you don't feel you feel better? What's your comfort level? And you're like, I want a refund. He goes. There's an Applebee's across the street. Go over there, have some lunch, come back in 40 minutes. And he comes back and you get cash. You get like, you get like, he hands you like eight, a bag of eight grand cash. Yeah. And he goes, tax is done. And you go, well, I don't even want to know what happened. Yeah. This place is unbelievable. I would do that. That would be a, that's what there should be a tax. It should be called don't ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> don't it, come is, back it is amazing though. When I the first time I went to the H and R block and I was like, well, all right, let's write off some stuff. I've never really written off mm-hmm. anything for comedy. Who's writing it off? Well, yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I I was uh, they were like, walk me through some of your. I was like, cell phone. Pay for a cell phone every month. This lady was like, well, what percentage would you say that you use your phone for your comedy career? I was like, seventy oh, percent. She's like, all right, we'll write off seventy percent of that. Yeah. I was like, it's just based on yeah. what I think. Yeah, could us yeah. maybe ninety, more of a ninety percent. Well, they you on, honestly, you could probably say being a comedian, it's probably is ninety percent. Yeah, like you're because you, you, there's a blur of our business to be like well i think about comedy every day like uh-huh. you know like when you have like we have a like you can have a company card and a personal card and like what do you put on what like i always i, always, I still have to call laura and i'm like where do, how am i buying this like is it on this or that yeah and we do everything right and uh laura's always been a stickler about it even forever and like just being like i need to know you know and uh but it's it it's a fine line of just like you're like i don't know dude i'm doing everything's comedy my whole life is comedy right i'm on the phone all day about it that's you but, know but that percentage is based on i don't have to prove that percentage it's just like what i think you probably have to prove it if they audit you. if they were to audit me i don't know how you would audit somebody yeah. for that but yeah similar to what we were talking about earlier i don't make nearly enough for them to audit me yet you're you going to be at the store and just be like what do you want you want to get uh you want cheerios or frosted flakes and the guy goes huh he stands up behind you. 
Flowers. Are you talking to a comedy? Was that a comedian? Are you talking about a joke? And he goes, No, you're you're not gonna know. You're not talking to my wife. I gotta get cereal. And he goes, Wow. I thought you used your phone 70% for comedy. <laughs> and it just seems I've been following you around for the past couple of days, you know, all the gas stations you go in. And <laughs> I do go in a lot of gas stations. <laughs> I spend an alarming percentage of my money at gas stations. I tried to write off my haircuts last year. The lady just laughed at me. Yeah. She was like, what is this? I go, I get haircuts. Yeah. She's like, I need to look good on stage. She was like, oh, you got yourself a haircut. She like yeah. crossed them all off. She's like, yeah. you can't do that, you idiot. Yeah. You can write, Mike kind of has me write off Netflix. Yeah. Because she says it's for research. I yeah. need to go. Your person's a little more creative than yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. want to try haircuts this year? I'll try Netflix. We'll see what happens. <laughs> haircuts for me, that'd be a hard sale. What are you researching? <laughs> Just watching comedies. Yeah. Like comedy specials, stuff yeah. like that. She says movies and yeah. cable and all that I can put on there. Yeah. So you, you, you're going to have to have some jokes. <laughs> you're going to see Brian's knack's going to be like, you might see that Paddington Bear, anybody? <laughs> That about number two came out because you heard the uproar about that one. It just you can only talk about your subscriptions. Just go. Uh, uh, that would be funny. The IRS makes you send a tape. So they want to see. Let's do see it. the act. Let's see what you've been doing. Let's see anybody, I tell you what. The count following your account on Hulu is hard. It's not as hard as Paramount Plus is, but it's difficult. He just has to name all yeah, the yeah. all the stuff that you do. <laughs> yeah. 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 That you're trying to write off. Yeah. Got a haircut the other yeah. day. A lot of mileage this year. It's been yeah. wild. <laughs> so you can go to a movie, drive the movie theater, write off the mileage to and from the movie theater and the movie itself because that's research. What does writing it off mean? It means it, you can deduct it from your taxable income so you don't have to pay taxes on it. So you're just like knocking down – your income and it's like what can i get off of it right so i do remember at the beginning because at the beginning you're when you're doing comedy like you would end up you're not even showing a profit because not even close yeah, yeah you're you're always like negative mm -hmm. uh and then it's like and when you get to the point where you show a profit no I'm just gonna <laughs> still. and then uh when so then you just knock it down so that's how they so when people get mad at companies or stuff like that they're saying like they're writing off so much stuff that it's like, no, they should be paying the taxes on this amount, but they're only paying the taxes on this amount. That's what that means, right? Mm -hmm. They find ways to loopholes and stuff Write like it that. off. Yeah. They're get, the ones writing it off. Mm -hmm. Well, and even individuals, know. I think, they can get into a different tax bracket because if they have creative accountants, they can find ways to move money around and yeah. things like that. There is, I mean, I have the tax brackets here. This is for, I think, a couple filing jointly. If you make less than twenty thousand a year, ten percent is the bracket. This is your income tax, federal mm -hmm. income this tax. Is federal income tax, and then it, I mean, it just periodically goes up, twelve percent, twenty two, twenty four, thirty two. The highest bracket over if you make over six hundred twenty eight thousand, you pay one hundred sixty eight thousand plus thirty seven percent of the of the excess of six hundred twenty eight thousand. So basically, thirty seven percent. Everybody pays it. P everyone who makes over six hundred twenty eight thousand, like every state. Or does yeah, this that's is federal. federal oh. So you could have in, it's state oh. tax on top of that. Yeah. We don't in Tennessee. Right. Yeah. But most other places do. So the tax bracket is ranging anywhere from 10% to 37%. Yeah. Again, this is for couples. I think it's different for individuals and different yeah. things like that. Yeah. You got to make, uh, I think, $10,000 to have to file or 25000 as a married couple. If you don't make that much, you don't have to file. Oh. Oh, they don't even bother? Unless you make some money from self-employment, which is only $400. Okay. If you make $400 a year, you have to file. Mm -hmm. If you make less than that, you don't? Correct. I don't know how you would even... That's from self-employment, like what we do, I guess. But if you work for a company and make less than $25,000 a year as a couple, you don't have to file. Because I know working for clubs, you know, they, they like feature pay for a weekend. Sometimes they're like, you, you don't even make enough this weekend for us to send you a... I think it's six hundred dollars. Yeah. Is that the amount? Yeah, they're like if you make more than six hundred, then you got to fill out a W T or whatever yeah. else. But they're like, you're here one weekend, you make four hundred bucks. Yeah, let's just forget about each other, just move yeah. on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's probably like without P. Yeah, it's like if you hire someone to do something, and you're like, you give them four hundred bucks, and you don't have to worry about it. Eighty percent of the federal government is funded by income tax. 
<laughs> Pretty big percentage. Yeah. Mm. Started in the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln started it to raise money for the Civil War. 3% tax on income over $800, which is roughly $23,000 today. So how's he telling everybody this back then? That's what I always... The newspaper. Question. Huh? The newspaper. And it just gets around? It just gets around, I guess. Wait, I guess the... the yeah. When was the phone invented? Not I like late 1800s. So what was that? But this is before close? the phone. So, but like how would he How big was the country then? Like where like, I mean, it's pretty much all east of the Mississippi. <laughs> so, yeah, that's I mean like I mean, you got to be like you could easily not pay taxes back then and be like like how do you not know to pay taxes? You're like how would I know? Yeah. Like 31 million people and so, like, how does he tell everybody? Like, he makes this speech. And I get, you know, it's like, I just don't know how does it get from... Maybe he Like, said, he's got to go to Missouri. Right. And then he's, you know, in D.C. or Pennsylvania, and he's up there. Mm -hmm. And he says, we're going to pay 3% taxes. Well, how long does that take? I guess they can take a train. So you got to have a reporter that's there. Mm -hmm. And then he's got to go take, I guess, a couple-day train, write it in the newspaper, and then... The newspaper just is like, oh, we got to pay taxes now. Like, it's not <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's not even like a lot. You're just like, dude, you're reading the old Hickory News. Like, are you kidding me? All right, we'll start paying them. I guess this thing says we have to. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know how. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't a quick process. He probably sent people from the federal government to different towns, and then yeah. they told their people. Yeah. And it was like a trickle down. Yeah, yeah. You got to spread the word. Or the Congress. Yeah. You guys go back to whatever you represent. Yeah. Yeah. And you tell the Let mayors. No, you break the bad people. news. I don't want to be yeah. there. You tell the mayors. The mayors have to tell the people. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know. Okay. I hate breaking bad news to people. I can't do it. Oh, yeah. It's tough. I always think you got to do it. Just just do it real quick. Did Sometimes I ever you tell say you? it so quick that it comes out of nowhere, and then they're like, what? And you yeah, go, yeah. You yeah. Just start talking about something else? Yeah. You're, you know, you're like, your house is gone. Your house burned <laughs> down. All right. Did you watch that <laughs> Hawks game last night? Hawks game. <laughs> I did a show at Zany's once. I can't remember if I talked about this on the podcast, but George Lopez had to cancel last minute. And so they threw together a show at 6.45 for a 7 p.m. show. Mm -hmm. So it's a sold-out crowd. Everybody's there to see George Lopez. Yeah. And they have to go up and say, hey, he's not here. Yeah. And I was like, I can't even be in the room yeah. when this happens. I walked outside. I go, yeah. let me know how it goes, dude. I can't yeah. be in there to hear them get upset. Yeah. And then I have to go out and do <laughs> comedy. What were they? Did they get upset? Well, they... David Chasteen, who was the sound guy there, he handled it great. He walked out. He wanted to do it. Yeah. This is, we're wired so different. Yeah. He's like, I love this. So he yeah. walked out. He was like, just want to let everybody know right out of the gates, you're all getting a refund for tonight. George Lopez can't be here. You're going to get your money back. But we were put together a great show. If you want to stick around, you know, you already got a babysitter. You already get your drinks ordered. We say you just stick around and enjoy the show. And they were awesome. Mm. Ended up being a really good show. Yeah. But I go, I can't. <clears throat> I could never do that. Yeah, I would hate that. Mm -hmm. And then did everybody stay? About fifteen people left. Uh, and the rest of them stayed, and it was one of the better shows I've ever done. Yeah, there. because yeah. they were like, "Oh, this is just for a free, free show, cherry on top." You yeah, know? yeah, it's good. Well, it's because he canceled. So how do you cancel that close? He was he was sick uh -oh. that day. Uh -oh. It was like so. It was like they were already there. They also. were trying to do it, and then it's like, yeah, he's like, happening. I can't get by there. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. When so everybody took. I have a hard time being in the room if I know something's <laughs> happening. Yeah, I think I I either don't want to be in the room or I have to be the one saying it. That's the only two. Yeah. Like I I either I either yeah I either don't want to be a part of it or I or I'm like let me because I feel like I. I don't know. It's like you feel like I I know my heart. I know that I will try to do give this news in a certain way uh-huh and or let me just get out of the room because then i'm going to be like you did, you said it no don't say it like that mm -hmm. like you know i'll think about it too much meredith was hit by a car yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so taxes have been around since 3000 bc mm. started in egypt old testament talks about giving one-fifth of your crops to pharaoh they were, everyone was commanded to do that Keep four fifths, give him one fifth. Wow. What did he do? Um, uh, they paid less taxes in ancient Egypt than we do now. 
<laughs> you give way more than one fifth now. Twenty percent. Forty percent. Yeah, that'd be two fifth. That'd be two fifths. Oh, but we give. Well, I guess it depends on what bracket you're in. You're in a bracket where you give. Forty percent? I guess not. I just remember the last percentage you said. <laughs> Found out Aaron's like, he's like, I mean, the highest was thirty-seven. I was like, whoa, this Aaron. Podcast, yeah, this yeah. podcast is wasting his time. Why are you even here, man? I mean, forty percent. Yeah, you do above the one percent. You're above. You're like a point yeah. one percenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one percent of the one percent. Yeah, yeah. And in, in the New Testament, one of Jesus' disciples, Matthew, was a tax collector. And tax collectors were despised during that time because they would either cheat people or because they were working for the Roman government, you know, hurting uh, the Jewish people who were under Roman rule. Yeah. So they were despised, but he became a disciple. All right. So there's different types of taxes. There's negative income tax for people who make so little money that the government gives them some back. Yeah. You're usually getting a refund for a long time, right? People in general? Yeah, like, I, I mean, I remember getting a lot of money back. Then you switch to going, you don't get money back. And first, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that's a shock to the system. Mm-hmm. When you're like, and you just, I mean, I remember just thinking, you're like, yeah, get my money back. Or I get, like, I love tax day because I was like, yeah. you got to get like $800, a thousand. You're like, that's just crazy, dude. I can't believe they're getting, you don't know that you're a loser at that point, mm-hmm. that you're just a young kid or, you know, what, not, I don't want to say loser because, uh, but when you're a young kid and you're you don't yeah. realize like oh I don't, it means I have no money yeah and ideally but, don't they always say the best is to break even yeah because if you're getting a refund that means you've been paying in too much to yeah. the government yeah that they're keeping your money that you deserve yeah but yeah the most yeah it's nice to get that refund it's nice to get it yeah you get yeah. a big check it feels like a free check it was hard. I mean I always worked for a company that took it out as you go. So it didn't hurt that bad. But now I pay quarterly, self-employed. Mm. I assume you pay. <coughs> what, what do you mean? I he pay, doesn't want to talk about it. Pay quarterly? Like I pay in an estimate of what I make. For taxes? Yeah. Yeah. Quarterly. That's usually oh, ball- I don't even yeah. know you could Let's do. Let's ballpark the number of 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> so might be a little high, but it's an easy one to get. Yeah, yeah. It's an all right year. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a good year. Yeah, yeah. He's got a podcast, baby. Yeah. 30 grand a year. So I don't I don't I wouldn't even know where to go from that. I just wanted to get the 30 grand joke out. Uh, uh, you don't pay quarterly? No, I didn't know that was an option. You pay your you pay the quarterly throughout the year? Yeah. And I just pay it all at once. Okay. I thought if you were self-employed, you were supposed to be paying. That's a sign of you're not doing good. Oh, so man. that's that's what everybody's listening at home. They're like, oh, Aaron. Golly. He's struggling. I got to head over to Jackson Hewitt, see what yeah. they're up to. <laughs> yeah. Start writing, writing off on Netflix. We're at Jackson Hewitt. You want to write stuff off? We're in the business of writing <laughs> off. You tell us anything, we will get it out of here. <laughs> like, I bought a cat. They go, does a cat live in the house that you work at? And you go, <laughs> yeah. And it goes, Write it oh, off. Dude. Yeah. 2020, I had a home office. Yeah. yeah. I built all this stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I got a new computer. Yeah. It's like home world. office stuff. Your home office is the majority of the suite. It's a thousand square feet. The and you're like, yeah. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. You go, where do you live at? In the other hundred square feet. Yeah. That's our. That's where only we do non work stuff. <laughs> there uh, used to be a beard tax. So you guys would have to be paying more. I got a little mustache now. I don't know mustache people. tax yeah a little beard is that intentional you, mustache- you going for it yeah i, I, like I i'm not like the bottom to be shaved but i was like we have i have like these two weeks i still got i got to do a couple shows uh but they're like private shows and we're doing vecchio and special next week in the nate land live podcast but i didn't have any like anything i was like having to f- film something or whatever mm-hmm. or do something and i was like oh let me, let me get a little run at this I was told with mustaches, people uh, like Eric Barber slash trainer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's always you get a lot of compliments from dudes more than women. With the beards, with mustaches. mustaches, mustaches. Yeah, yeah, dudes like mustaches. I think they're back, dude. They're no, they're they're definitely back. But like, like that mustache, like from that kid at St. Peter's. But like every dude's gonna be like, yeah, dude, that mustache is awesome. Yeah. And then most women are like, I don't know. <laughs> like they don't. I don't know how much they love mustaches. Well, they're going to have to learn to love them, dude. Yeah, they they better figure it out. Well, this was a beard tax. This was the ruler of Russia in 1698. He took a tour of... Reasonable guy. Go ahead. Yeah, of course it was Russia. He took a tour of um, Europe, Spain, 
France, all that. And mm-hmm. before everyone there was clean shaven. And he thought, oh, that's the style. That's what's cool now. So when he came back home, he's like, guys, this is where it's at. we got to start going clean shaven. That's what's in style now. And it didn't catch on too great. So he started taxing people with beards just to try to make them shave their beards off. Oh, yeah. It's like the Yankees. Yeah. What about the Yankees? Can't have a facial hair at the Yankees. Really? Yeah. I think the Reds used to do that. Maybe they still do. You got to pay a tax. You know I don't the, have to pay tax, but <laughs> you, they don't let you have it. You know why the Yankees always win? Why? You can't stop staring at their pinstripes. You ever see that movie? Catch me if you can? Yeah. All right. I've yeah. seen it. I don't remember that line. It's a hot yeah, line yeah. from the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. He goes, but they're a pretty solid team, though. He goes, <laughs> well, yeah. They That's what the guy goes, because they have Mickey Mantle? Yeah. He's like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's a big reason, though. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't there, I can't remember now, a player that was pretty famous that that was a deal, like he didn't want to yeah. shave it. I'm gonna say Giambi. That's all I don't know for sure, but in my head, that sounds right. Guess. That's a good a guess. Giambi. He wasn't a facial hair guy, but yeah, that sounds about right. No, like his brother. There was two of them. Yeah, Jeremy. Jason and Jeremy. Yeah, I just watched Moneyball. Talk yeah. about somebody giving bad news. Uh, Billy Bean loved telling Jeremy Giambi he was being traded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he loved it. Tells him yeah. the guy's about to cry. Gets up out of his seat, and Billy Bean immediately moves over to the seat he was just sitting in yeah. and sits in it. He loved it. Yeah. But he's like, you got to tell him direct. Just get to it. Yeah. Yeah. You just go, yeah, right on the. Jeremy, you're being traded to the Phillies. Yeah. Here's this number. Call it. Yep. You're a good ball player. Good luck. Yeah. Dang. Yep. Yeah. I just watched that movie last night. It's a great movie. Al Capone went to prison on tax evasion. They can never get him for all his murders, so they finally got him on charges of tax evasion and fraud. Spent 11 years in jail, prison for it. It's a lot he of died in there. Wrong. I think Al Capone died in prison, right? Yeah. I'll I mean, look at, I'll look at so it. they're just he just didn't pay any taxes. Yeah, and they can just that. prove it. Like I guess because they're like, yeah, the Elliot Ness, the yeah, uh, oh yeah, what's the movie now with Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, Tombstone. <laughs> it's a great the movie. Rock, but now I'm, it's escaped no. me. Um, I don't know. All right. Anyway, that's a great. It's a great movie. Willie Nelson had so much back taxes. He owed $32 million <laughs> that the IRS seized all his assets. He had to make an album <laughs> called The IRS Tapes. Oh, really? <laughs> the IRS Tapes, Who Will Buy My Memories. And he, all the profits went to paying off the IRS. Many of his assets were auctioned off and purchased by friends who donated or rented his possessions to him for a s- small fee. I mean, what kind of friends are those? Like, I'll give it back to you, but you're going to have to pay me a little <laughs> bit. Well, interest. they have to pay for it. Yeah. I they mean, did. they're all raising money, so they're like, I'll give it back to you, but you got to pay. Yeah. That's $32 million. That's Is that someone just not paying taxes in his... I think he got in some bad investments, too, and, yeah. and it just kind of spiraled. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the worst. You see, you got, like, Dane Cook had that. Oh, so did? The, yeah, Dane Cook his brother. his brother. His brother stole millions from yeah. him. He's in prison right now. Yeah, it's that's tough. That's I mean, that's just so brutal. Yeah, dude. Wesley Snipes spent three years in prison. For yeah, tax evasion. Al Capone did. Yeah, was not he in die. like real prison? Are there is there like, like a, a different federal, prison? Yeah, there's like a federal. What's prison. that other prison? You always hear that they're like, well, they're in a different prison. Like is white it white like, collar prison? Yeah, is it a, like a fun prison? Just a low security prison. Just a little different. Like it's like there's no you don't have any fear of getting killed or something. Like you're know. just, what are you doing? You're going to, you get like a meal and you get three good meals. Is your, what's your cell look like? Is it like a real jail cell? Is it? All I know is from the episode of The Office where they hired Martin. Yeah. He was in prison. Yeah. yeah. And he described it was better than working at Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, what are they really better? I did a show at the, at a, at a mini, at a state prison in Minnesota with John yeah. Chris. We spent the day there. Yeah, at this prison, and what they told us is that this prison was so nice relative to some of the others that you're in almost no danger of anything bad happening to you because they don't want to be transferred out of this prison. Yeah, people that are in there, so everybody's on good behavior. Yeah, for the most part, there. So yeah, that's some of it. But is it where they were in jail cells? They were in. They almost look like dorm rooms. Yeah, bunk beds oh, in there. They did. Yeah. They didn't have the bars. Yeah, yeah. But they were, you know, doors. Well, everybody has those. Yeah, that's true. Everybody has that. Are you thinking about if you needed a break? No, you just always hear about this. Like, you know, didn't Martha Stewart go to jail yep. for taxes or something? Hers was like insider trading, oh. I think. Yeah. So uh, even with that, 
like but then like where did she go like does she have like a decent room is it is she on a bunk bed is it i don't know you know i feel like i heard crazy stories about like they had to do cavity searches and stuff like that when they when she first yeah. goes into prison and i think they check your cavities but it means more than that yeah it means more than that yeah your crevices yeah your crevices yeah. <laughs> um is it nothing to do with cavities <laughs> I guess that's one area they yeah. check. Well, do they, they check there? They don't do a dental check out when you go. They check all the places you can put stuff in your body. But like yeah. the the uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be a crevice? Like crevice check. A, cavity. A crevice just, check. Cavity just means a hole. You know. I thought it. Yeah, but I thought. I mean, <laughs> oh, I would be in for a surprise. <laughs> he goes. You're gonna do a cavity check. You're like, yeah, I've done this quite a bit. They go, where are you going though? Where are, you, where are you going, buddy? He goes, I don't understand what's happening right now. I have my mouth open the whole time. Uh, uh, huh? What's happening? <laughs> I never thought about it other than. You're like, oh, y'all don't need to wear gloves. Yeah. It's all good. He goes, I don't. You know, he goes, I got two. All right. I'll tell you right now. I got two. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm going to be up front. I'm going to be up front with you. I got two of them. All right. Gonna warn you, I've eaten yeah. a lot of candy, so goes, get ready. My dentist gets after me all the time. My gums bleed. <laughs> I got two cavities. Whatever. I'm there. You know. I'm, I wouldn't lie to you. Look. <laughs> you can search if you want. You I can don't search care. you. What do I care? <laughs> you know? I'll show you where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> so there's uh, property tax, which we all yeah. pay. Sales tax. Tennessee has one of the highest sales tax rates. Why do we have that? Kentucky doesn't have sales tax. I think every state does. Someone told me that today. Eric told me that today. He said oh. he buys groceries in Kentucky because they live kind of that way. And mm -hmm. then, uh, and he says because they don't have sales tax. Really? That's what he said. On some, some it might be you know on groceries or on medicine, it's groceries stuff like that. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, But you still, if you buy a biker, you still got to pay a biker a car. So, but yeah, no f sales tax on food would be pretty Huge. nice. And we have the highest sales tax? One of the highest. I looked up all the states. It's 7% in Tennessee, and then the city you live in can tack on. So, uh -huh. like, for Nashville, it's 9.25%. Yeah. Alabama's high, too. The way they justify that is we have relatively low property taxes yeah. compared to other states. So, it's like yeah. a give and take. And, mm -hmm. and no state income tax. And no state income tax. Yeah. So, Which I think we're one of the few states that does that. Us in Texas. and Florida. I, yeah, Florida. Arizona, maybe. Mm -hmm. Places that are doing great. Yeah, but the property taxes have skyrocketed. Oh, really? Here, yeah, because they just did a reassessment, and you know, the property in Nashville is so expensive now that a lot of people can't pay your prop can't pay the property taxes. Yeah, I think I looked it up. I have a joke about it now, but property taxes. So I'm not going to do the joke. But it's, I thought I looked it up somewhere, and like uh, Beverly Hills was like some like forty or fifty thousand dollars a year. I think so. I don't know. But I think so. And like I was looking up some house. I don't know if it's a crazy house. Look up property taxes in Beverly Hills. It was like something crazy. You're like, good night, dude. Like, I mean, you know, that's a person's salary just to and that's not even the house. That's just uh, you know. Well, if you bought a house, say in the here in the night. Twenty five thousand a year in property tax. That's an that's the average. So some of them pay a lot more than yeah. that. The average is twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. If you bought a house here in the 1950s and you're just getting by, you're old now, got a fixed income, but you live in some hot new neighborhood and they do a property value reassessment, yeah. you may have to pay so much more property tax mm -hmm. on this house and you can't afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. What's a fixed income? It's like you just... Like you get money in from Medicare yeah. or Social Security yeah, yeah. and your bills are all kind of lined up where you can't... You don't have any extra money to... yeah venture so to speak you know what i mean yeah you get you end up being like you have a hundred dollars a month to spend on whatever kind of like yeah, yeah you kind of know what you owe and you kind of know yeah. what you get in and stuff like that yeah but if, so, if there's a major change yeah yeah it can really yeah. mess you up that's when he comes on seinfeld and he goes she's on a fixed income does she, does oh yeah say that? nana yeah nana i think he does yeah Uncle yeah. Leo. yeah all right uh the president has to pay his taxes as well but uh he gets a non-taxable travel account for a hundred thousand dollars and a non-taxable entertainment account worth nineteen thousand dollars. I get the travel account, but nineteen thousand for entertainment. 
You remember when Chris Christie spent like twenty grand on concession stands at a? <laughs> at a... <laughs> is that when you voted for him? <laughs> That's when yeah. I was like, "This is my guy." Oh, uh, like because he would take people up there. But it just, who knows? But I yeah. remember seeing the amount and being yeah. like, "Dude, this is not a good look for you, man." Christie racked up eighty two thousand uh, dollars in concessions. Yeah. <laughs> in Delaware, and you want to be like, at you want to go and Jets game and oh. was like, dude, I look, I get it. You're taking people out. But I honestly, if we had someone, you know, a little less, you know, I think we could keep it to 40. Like, he goes, what, dude? He goes, we got everyone wants hot dogs. He goes, they have dipping Dots there, man. He's wanting to be like, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going. I'm yeah. going. It's on the state. Let's do it. Uh, England used to tax the number of windows in a house. Mm. It's a will we'll door argument. I know. I yeah. Know. And then after that, houses began to be built with fewer windows. And then people started suffering health problems from lack of air. And so the tax was finally repealed. Why would they do windows? So I, I, I looked up a little bit about this. So they wanted to find a way to tax wealthier people yeah. more. Yeah. But people really did not like the idea of, you know, you're penalizing me for being more successful. Yeah. yeah. And that's a little intrusive to like yeah. – attack me based on my income like that. So they said, well, what is a good indicator of your success? The bigger the house you have, the more windows you're going to yeah. have. And also that allows us to count it without going into your house. We can yeah. just walk up and you can count yeah. the windows from the outside. Yeah. So that's the way they did it. And then people just started, you know, just stop building windows on their house. They got yeah. around that real quick. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. You just do no, you just got a house. There's nothing. It's just no windows. It's complete dark in there. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pitch black dark. Uh, Texas has a poll tax where they tax strip clubs and things like that. The revenue goes toward. <laughs> Probably call it something else than that. <laughs> I figure you come more. I mean, it's a very funny name, but I would just think you would be like, well, it's a regular. If I've got to pay these to a government, maybe just let's class it up. Yeah. A little bit. Like, you know, kind of a entertainment or yeah. something. Adult yeah. entertainment tax. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, syntax who made it? too. Yeah. His names are funny. Syntax. I almost think I understand that more than the poll. The poll tax just feels like it's you know, it's, you know, just like who decided that? P O L E what? tax. Mm -hmm. That sounds oh, like it was funny. decided at the place. I think it's one guy that thinks, ah, oh, this would be funny. Yeah, it is a little poll funny. play on. It words. is funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then Sam Adams. Uh, was Boston's tax collector. I'll end on this. He was Boston's tax collector in the 1700s, but he was terribly uninterested in his job. <laughs> so he would just overlook tax debt from people who were having problems, down on their luck and stuff like that, which made him kind of like a working uh, a Robin Hood for mm. the working class in Boston. Yeah. He was like, don't worry about it, man. But tax collectors were personally liable for uncollected taxes, so he had to make up the difference. And by 1765, nine years later, he owed more than eight thousand dollars, equivalent to one point five million today. Yeah, uh, he had, he did finally end up trying to go after some of the uncollected taxes, but not with much success. And his well-to-do friends end up having to cover most of his debt. So he was a good guy, tried to help him out, but yeah. things got out of hand. Well, it doesn't feel like he was being like not good at his job. It seems like he just had a. Just was a, a nice heart. person. He, he had a good hated, heart. He hated the government, dude. Yeah. I yeah. guess what it says wasn't. Is that why he created the beer? I kept thinking <laughs> you were about to tell me. And so he started a beer company and, uh, <laughs> and then he made all his money. That's what I thought, honestly, yeah. we were heading. So this is what made him start his beer company. And then now he's a billionaire. I go, oh, that's cool, man. Right. So maybe he wasn't bored in his job. He just didn't want to do this job and they made him do it. So I was like, I'm not going to tax these poor people. Yeah, you got to go look them in the face, mm -hmm. and you're like, "That's the problem." You get because I mean, you would that, but that is it's a weird balance because that you're going to see that up close. There's if you have a, any kind of heart, mm -hmm. you you can't ask this, and then that's where I think problems get now. There's people are too far away from the thing that they're the, the person that they're asking from, and then you're like, "Well, that's not fair." Well, yeah, now it's just a website. And, yeah, or just let, click I mean, it, yeah. something, and like you owe us. Yeah. All right. So tax day is uh, Monday, April 18th. Monday, that. April 18th. So go do your taxes. Get an extension at least. Get an ex Do the right thing. <laughs> Get an extension. <laughs> go to Jackson Hewitt. Jackson Hewitt, where we 
We kind of got our own tax. <laughs> we got, yeah. You want a refund? Go to yeah. Jackson Hewitt. We'll do whatever you want. Understand we do have some, we have a tax we get one under the table because you got to slot them a little bit, you know, <laughs> but we make some, we make some stuff go away. You know what I mean? Some stuff disappears. You'll write some stuff off. You're going to write some stuff You'll off. write a lot off. You're going to write, you know. And I would recommend going in late on a Saturday afternoon right when they're about to get off because <laughs> they'll get it done. Quick. Quick. Yeah. yeah. April 17th. Yeah. 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 It's like when you walk in, uh, you know, Applebee's and it's, they're closed in five minutes, you're going to get a, a very, uh, <laughs> not the best steak. <laughs> You'll get it quick, though. Yeah, but you get it. It'll be quick. It's still considered a steak, but just hope no one dives in looking at it. So, <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, Zany's live podcast and then my Vecchione special. Uh, I'll be in Florida uh, next week uh, on the tour. Do y'all, Salt yeah. Lake City and yeah, we- Salt Lake City, Woodstock, Georgia. I'm in Denver, Colorado, first week of May. Never done anything out there. I'm excited. Denver Comedy Underground. Come see me. Do that. That'll be fun. All right. Yep. All right. Love you guys as always. Thank you. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.